new show. So hopefully he'll come on. So I'm just going to hope for that. But uh, we're here with two brothers as well. We're here with Stefano. And we're also here with um, our digital. Tool. So let's get it in, family. Let's get it in. I definitely want to ask uh, Brother Saracen some questions when he gets on. Um, and I actually, actually want to ask you some questions as well, Gabs. I need to keep it fair. Uh, I need to keep it balanced. I need to grill him, though. I need to grill him. I'm not even going to lie. I need to grill him. So let's see what's good. Um, so, Gabs, my first question is to you, since you're still here with us. Um, was there slavery? Uh, uh, taking place in Kemet. Um, okay, so when you say slavery, and even when you say Kemet, because this is even um, um, the question that I posed to um, the brother Saras, I, I asked him, I said, when you're talking about Kemet, uh, which time period are we talking about? Because remember, um, you had loads of different people that was ruling in Kemet. You know, you had the Nubians, obviously, that took rule. You had the Syrians that came in. You had the Hyksos. You had the Greeks. You had the Romans. You had the Persians. You, you had so many different people that was ruling in Kemet. So if you're going to say, um, was there slavery in Kemet, um, I, I, you have to point me to the particular time frame and who was the people that was ruling. So uh, I, it's kind of hard to say because I haven't seen, from from like I said, from the ancient, from ancient Kemet, uh, pre- Pre um pre colonized and pre invading, I haven't seen no slavery taking place for my research so far. I haven't seen it. Um, Do you know what I mean? All right. And also, um, was uh, Kemet ancient Egypt um in let's say from the old kingdom to the middle kingdom? Um, did they practice any form of racism against blacks, uh, Asiatics, or uh, Europeans? Um. In the Middle Kingdom, did they practice any form of racism? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think they did. I don't think they did practice any forms of racism because um, remember, um, they was allowing these people to come in and do trading with them. Do you know what I mean? If you're if you was gonna be if you were practicing racism, you wouldn't you wouldn't allow people to come in and do trade with you, um, uh, marry into your families. Um, you know what I mean? And live live in your land. It just it just doesn't make no sense um and i'm i'm sure i'm sure i haven't seen any forms of racism towards any other race they did actually identify the different race groups of people there i think there is um i think there is a glyph somewhere where they they portray the different people that came in but i don't think there was any there wasn't any there wasn't any racism to say that well okay these people can't come in or you guys can't come in do you know what i mean maybe after um maybe after um the invasion do you know what I mean? When you've been invaded and those people have come in and have tortured your land and, you know, raped your women and, and ruled over your, your land for a couple of years, obviously that might bring a little bit of hostility into your heart, but uh, I, I haven't really, I haven't seen any text that shows any of that. All right. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Now, I need to um, go back to my brother, uh, Saracen. Saracen's in the building. So let's get it in, family. Saracen's in the building. Um, Saracen, are you here? Yes. Good evening, people. How are you doing? All right. We're here. All right. Finally, we've got these two titans on. Um, you know, what the plan was uh, from beforehand was for Saracen to actually come down on Sunday and to present his information while Scabs was literally there to just take it all in and to question him. And then also now we've had the opportunity for Gabs to come on, talk with the Titans, present his information. And uh, we're also going to give uh, Brother Saracen some uh, the opportunity to question Gabs. And I'm going to have to arrange a nice little debate between you two. Or if it's a group debate and get, um, you know, somebody else on your team, whether it's uh, somebody like Mohammed Hijab or somebody like um, who else is there Adnan Rashid or somebody else who is uh, capable of taking on this topic with you you know can come on your side um, or whatever the case is because I think this is going to be an excellent discussion so but before we start what I would like to do is this I want to ask Saracen Saracen before we go in what was the premise of your debate of your presentation oh, okay so what the point of what I was trying to show um, if I could just frame it, just a few, just just a couple of minutes. Uh, if I could just frame what I was trying to say. Now, a couple of weeks before, 
we were talking about slavery. It started off with Adnan Rashid. He made a comment about Ibn Khaldun and find another, you know, person. Then it got into Muslim and slavery. So then we had uh, how Muslims enslave people, black people, etc. I was sitting there and I was listening. I was thinking, hold on, you know, fine. I started doing my research and I found some of your points were absolutely valid, absolutely true. You know, some of the things were shocking, disgusting. Um, and as a Muslim, I couldn't defend that. You know, we had Arabs and Persians uh, who enslaved black people. Um, so I, I, my approach is I'm not going to defend a, in, indefendable. But then what, what happened was it started, people started making comments in the comment section, oh, Muslims, they hate black people, they enslave black people, black power this, this, that. And then you had Kemet people saying, oh, look, uh, you need to go, you need to leave Islam, come back to, uh, you know, the Kemet, your original religion. I was like, boy, these guys don't know what they're talking about. Because Kemet was known for enslaving black people as well. It wasn't the whole race thing. Let's go, let's be real. Let's be the whole race thing didn't matter up until the 19th, uh, maybe, yeah, 19th century when uh, certain white imperialists put made race and so they could be seen as you know the liberators and this whole race thing before that people worked on tribes you know it was tribal alliances how color of your skin how much did it matter we'll discuss that on another show so oh, i came and i said you know what now you guys are going to get the medicine and i'm going to give you the full whack the full shebang you know, and all right, first of all, I just want to say um, with Gabs, I, I think the Gabs is a top brother. Well, to be honest, brother, that was a rubbish presentation. To be a half of it was memes and laughing. At, like, you know, come on. He wants to see Bill Crosby. Deal with my points. You can't deal with my points because I haven't. Unfortunately, there was a, a man with who was on his period uh, that kept on bugging me. Um, and he kept on interrupting my thing. So I never even got to my sledgehammer. Uh, so you're gonna, now you're going to get the real medicine. Uh, you know, and you can't come back from this because I think as Muslims and as Kemet people, when there's injustice, you got to call it injustice. Don't just back people because they're Muslim. Don't just back people because of Kemet. So my whole point with this was to show that slavery existed between blacks. Nubians were black. Ancient Egyptians were black. It happened. Let's just be real. It was. It's not unique to Muslims or Christians. Uh, and 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 I'm I'm easily I can prove that um, I I might not be a scholar, right? I admit that, but I refer to scholars, and the scholars that I refer to, you ha you can't they they they're top, you know. It's a fact that the ancient Egyptians enslaved Nubians, and sometimes Nubians enslaved ancient Egyptians. This is the way of the world. So, Gabs, you can't win this, my friend. And, you know, as much as I like you, you can't come back from this because that's just the reality. Okay, so if I'm if I'm getting this right, uh, the actual claim is uh, enslaved Nubians and vice versa, Nubians enslaved Kemets. Indeed, more so the ancient Egyptian uh, enslaved Nubians. Yes. Okay, and you're saying this is um, based on what is it fueled on? Is it fueled on something, or is it just simple, just slavery? J just just scholarship. Yeah, it's based on like real scholarship, you know, people who've actually researched this. And I'm saying that people need to be honest with their history, you know. I think what you guys are doing, especially what Gabs is doing, is amazing because we're getting young black people into the park. You know, I'm making these claims. Let, let's just be like, hyper side. Let's just put that for one side, yeah, right? What we're doing here on this show right now, I'm forcing you to assess your material. I'm forcing people to research you're forcing me to research. You're forcing Muslims to research. That can only be a good thing. It can only, it's always going to improve our reading. It's going to improve our research skills. And that's what the whole Titans TV is about. So hyperside, you know, that's the good thing that's come out of it. You know, I've been doing lots of reading. Gabs has done, well, Gabs, your presentation could have been better. But, you know, um, you know this is what it's about. Um, but now, let's get back to the hype because now we're going to deal with some real, real things. All right, so we're going to get into the real things. So my brother's saying that, you know, the claim is that, uh, you know, Kemets were enslaved in Kushites, and that's majorly the uh, point. Um, 
also, uh, this information is backed up by uh, scholarship. Other scholars have done the uh, work into this. Also, I want to know how do you define slavery? Are we uh, comparing it to Islamic slavery? Or are we comparing it to another form of slavery? Are we comparing it to chattel slavery? What, what, what are we comparing it to? There, there, there's lots of different types of slavery. Um, so in the, in the ancient period, there was chattel slavery. Uh, we know that the ancient Egyptians uh, enslaved people through chattel means, bonded slavery. There was bondage. There was forced labor. They had masters. Um, you know, they had slave masters. This is documented. It's, it's facts. Um, I can bring that to you now if you want. Um, similarly, within uh, the, the Arab, uh, especially the Persians, they, they did the same thing. Or within the white Europeans, they did the same thing. You know, so that's what I'm saying. Injustice, injustice. Yeah, there might be levels of slavery, yeah? All right, but injustice and slavery, we all agree slavery is wrong, you know? So, uh, yes, my premise is I can, I can show that it wasn't just servitude because a lot of people in the comment section, oh, bro, there's a difference he doesn't know between slavery and servitude. Boy, you don't know between slavery and servitude because oh, now I'm going to show you, you know, now I'm going to show you how there was slavery and how, and this is, this is a point that I never got to because, you know, someone was nagging in my ear and trying to put me off because I, Personally, Gabs, I think you're more than capable of discussing with me. and You didn't need a mouthpiece there, uh, you know, to oh. kind of interrupt every five minutes. But yeah, so to be real, um, let's, let's, let's just, we'll, we'll talk about the slavery and we'll talk about how black Nubians were castrated. This is documented. We'll talk about okay, that. Okay, so, um, so also, I need to just uh, check with you as well. Are you, um, is there a difference between prisoners of war in your in your eyes and slavery or are you equating the two okay so there's two things there was definitely prisoners of war but though most of those prisoners of war uh ended up being slaves so that's the thing um you you may find this the people who have done the research and it's not always easy to do the people who've done the scholarship they have found this um, in numerous instances Think about ancient Egyptians and Egyptians in total, and I need people to remember this. Egyptians were known for whitewashing history. When they lost battles, this is fact, when they lost battles, they wouldn't document it. You know, uh, it, but when you go to their opponents and read their history, you'll see how they got their asses whooped in so many times. History is always, you know, they, they've got this thing that they want to be seen as the winners, you know, and, and that's always how okay. it is. All right. And you also, uh, you know, made claim that, you know, scholars have done the research in this. Um, I just want to know uh, which scholars and which books have you read on this particular subject? Okay. So I read a few books. So Redford was one. Um, and we're going to be talking about that. So let's talk about, should we talk about chattel slavery first? Okay. So I just wanted to know, have you actually read um, uh, Donald read, B. Redford's book? Yeah, I've read some of it. And I've read some of uh, the Wretched Cush. But I've got, I got people also who are working with me to do some of the research for me. So, Okay, so which one of Don Redford's books did you read? Uh, the, the one that I mentioned, the thing. I haven't got it to hand. Hold on. Is oh, it the Encyclopedia or is it from uh, Slavery? No, 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 the Encyclopedia. The reason I showed the Encyclopedia was uh, because I just wanted to show that he's a scholar. He's not a mind. Do you understand? Okay. He's, he's a big, big, big thing. So, Don Redford, The Black Experience of Ancient Egypt. So, I've got a few quotes from that. I think I read part of that out within the debate. But yeah, we can go there. We can go there, you know, um, or we can show memes. It's up to you, Gabs. What do you want to do? Ex excellent. Excellent. All right. So, let's get it in now. Um, Gabs, are you there, fam? Yo, bro. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here do right now is to do a cross-referencing round um i don't want any new information to be brought in uh, as of yet i know my brother saracen you may have some new information but i think it'll be unfair on gabs and our audience if new information is being presented right now i would want for you two to do a cross-reference round based upon um what gabs has presented and based upon what you presented at speaker's corner and once that is uh thoroughly being fleshed out uh, I'll uh, bring new information that you would like to have so at least we can have a nice chronology our audience members can follow uh, how does that sound to you 
I've got to get all my research to hand, bro. Cool. I've got, oh, yeah, from my point of view, I've got, I'm working on my phone right now. So, I, I, you know, I've got to get all that information to hand. But yeah, let, I, can, I can try to deal with whatever you have. Um, and if I need to cross references, I can try to grab it later on. Or if not, we can right. continue this tomorrow, yeah? All right, excellent. So what I'm going to say to, to you is, I'm going to allow you to ask Gabs one question. And then afterwards, Gabs has to answer that question. And then Gabs ask an, an, a question to Saracen. And he has to answer it and so forth and so forth. Okay. Is that, is that okay for everybody? S sounds, sounds good to me, my bro. All right, let's Yo. go. So Saracen, uh, the floor is yours to ask any questions. Oh, okay, so what I want to ask Gavs is, uh, do you deny that in the ancient times that p tribes enslaved tribes, whether they be black tribes enslaving black tribes or black tribes serving Arabs or Arabs slaving blacks, do you deny that? And, you know, from that, would you admit that the, the, the ancient Egyptians then therefore enslaved Nubians? Um, so there's two questions there. So basically, the first thing you said, the first question was, do I acknowledge that tribes in Africa was enslaving one another in ancient times? Um, I would say most probably. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't dwelt into other cultures to see. They could have. That's my fair answer. They could have. I don't know. Maybe. But um, if they did, I wouldn't mind showing, I don't have an issue if they did, if that's in the history. If they did, they did. I'm not the type of person to say, oh, um, no black people was enslaving and da 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 if, if there's some right, um, if there's right and true proper in, um, information being shared on the, on the matter saying that, yeah, there's some artifacts, there's some proven documentation that, yes, it was happening, then it was happening. Do you know what I mean? I'm not going to lie to myself and say, no, it weren't. So if it was happening and there's um, claims and stuff to back it up, then obviously I don't have an issue. It's fine. Now, based on the whole Egyptian and the Nubian stuff, um, from what I've read so far in my studies, from what I've seen, yeah, I haven't seen any, um, I haven't read or seen any uh, documentation that says that the, the ancient Kemites was enslaving the Nubians. Do you know what I mean? I haven't seen it. Where, obviously, I just read showing that um like Kemet was the was the daughter was the daughter the, the daughter to Nubia. Do you know what I mean? They were seen as a daughter, they were families. Do you know what I mean? You had Nubian, that's what I said, you had Nubian kings that was ruling in in ancient Kemet. Do you see what I'm saying? So you wouldn't get ancient Kemet if it wasn't for Nubia. Do you see what I'm saying? So I, I, I don't know. So that's why I said it I, I don't know. It, you'd have to show me the timelines and the periods and and, and and obviously the documentation. If you can if you can show me that and I can see it, then then obviously I have to accept it in it. But I haven't I haven't seen it through my studies so far, no. Okay, that, that's great. Um I'm gonna let you answer me your question in a second. Um no, I appreciate your honesty, but I think that's where you probably need to do your bit of research because if we look at the how uh, Egypt itself was uh, you know united. There was no way. There was, I mean, the Nile Valley, we know there was loads of different tribes with their own gods. Um, and the way it was united through, was for warfare. This was just a fact in ancient times. It wasn't, it wasn't necessarily about race. And the only reason I've mentioned race in this is just to show that it's not even with the, most of the Muslim conquests. It wasn't about race. It was about tribes. It was about empire. And that's the point. With, even with the ancient Egypt, it was about empire. It wasn't about so much religion but you know once you're there they, they culturally invaded but i mean i would definitely say do your research if you want and i want everyone to do this so type in even in wikipedia slavery in ancient egypt and you know you can just check that out for yourself you know and it's got all the information in there slavery in ancient egypt um and i think that will, that will probably be useful for you so some of the references i mentioned are in there as well Okay, um, Gabs, uh, you have the opportunity to ask um, Saracen any question. Okay, um, I'm going to ask Saracen probably two questions. Um, one, the first question I would like um, to ask Saracen is, um, um, if you could, where did you, um, actually to show me um, the time period, the time period, so that's the dates, the dates and um, and who and the kings at the time that was enslaved that, that the Kemites were enslaving the Nubians. That's one. I want to know the date and the, and the, and the, who it was 
who was the king or who was the people that was enslaving the Nubians, if you can show me that. And two, my other question is, um, how do you think, um, or if you know, if you do know, how do you think, who do you think um, the ancient Kemites were? That's another question. I want to know who do you so yeah, who do you think the ancient Kemites were? Do you think they were just the people that were just there, or do you think they came from somewhere, or like how, how who do you think those people were? Yeah, those are my two questions. No, that's a really good, they're valid question. So, uh, the first, if I could answer the second one first, because I think then I can lead into the first one. Yeah, the second one was um, they were all part of Africa. They were originally all African. Yeah. Those, the, in the first migration out of Africa, they settled in the Nile Valley. Some of the people, they still stayed in Africa. But basically, as, as, I, as uh, it wasn't clear, but I used a map just for references for, uh, purposes. I know that that map is a recent map. I could show you an older map. And I think I sent that to Kalam, but it wasn't so clear. But basically, there was just a strip of the Nile Valley separated them. So they were all originally, if in a pre dynastic period, they were all African tribes that migrated, yeah? Now, within that, there was warfare between them. That was, like I said, that's just how it went. So when, you, when, when people were enslaved in the old kingdom, be it the Zankat kingdom in, of uh, 2649 to 2630 BC, Jojoya kingdom of 2630 to 261 BC, the, um, then we got in the fourth dynasty, up until all the way throughout, all the way throughout, all of the dynasties, they enslaved. So you are absolutely right that there was a period, and that's what I was trying to show with my documentary, but I was being interrupted in the debate. I was trying to show there was a period where the, the Nubians took over ancient Egypt. And, and I think I mentioned uh, the ruler at the time begins with T. Um, he, he was ruling both kingdoms. Um, and that's what I was showing. So that when that happened, it carried on. There was a time then, and I know what your premise is. Your your premise is as that you know Egypt changed. I accept that, no problem. You know when you had the Asiatic people come in, you know Cleopatra, etc. You know it changed. The colors changed. But what I'm saying to you is that the 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 the, the original uh, old dynasties, the first certainly the first uh, eight dynasties, maybe probably more. They were in, they were mainly black, and they were you had. And I quote, I said, black on black violence. And that, this was a follow up from my first debate from what, when uh, Sarah said, Muslim on Muslim violence. You remember when I was debating with Ali Dawa, he goes, oh, Muslim on Muslim violence. Everyone used to laugh. So this is why I made that reference of black on black violence. That's what I meant by that. So yes, certainly. When, when you then had the Asiatic people come in, uh, you know, in the later dynasties, in the second intermediate period, and in the new kingdoms, no doubt that they carried on this and it, was, it worked both ways. But my point was, and the point of this whole kind of debate is, I want, you know, the people of Kemet to be honest, you know, it is a black power movement. Um, and, and it, you know, we welcome that. It's, well, it's good to know your history, but you, we want you to be honest with your history and show that, that, you know, all the stuff that happens within that history as well. That's what we ask. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, hopefully, what I'd like to do now actually is just open it up uh, to our panel members. Okay, so my panel members, if there's any questions you would like to ask either one um, of these um, debaters or individuals right now, uh, please just open up your mic as soon as possible so I know who's first to ask a question. Wow, okay. Nobody wants to ask a question. That's perfect. Yeah, man, I want to ask a question, bro. All right. Kofi, go ahead, King. All right, brother Saracen. Um, I'm wanting to know if you've used any African sources, like directly for your for your evidence, and do you have the medu nature for the word slave? Uh, to answer your second question, there is a word for the slave. It's debated. Um, some people say it means slave. Some people say it means servant. Um, I can bring that to you because I can't pronounce it properly right now and I, I've written it down on my iPad. Unfortunately, I don't have that time, but there is something out there. Um, the first question would apply to that one also. So, then. yeah, so the first, remind me, sorry, brother, remind me your first question again. So the first question would apply, also apply to that information. 
have you used yeah. any African sources for that? So, so yeah, in terms of I've used scholarship. So yeah, I did mention Dr. Ben. It, would that be enough? So Dr. Ben said in in, in uh, of Africa and the Nile Valley uh, uh, civilization, he said that ancient Egyptians were enslaving Nubians, and the reason they they took their women is and and the only purpose for that was rape. And he also said that from that that the Nubians did the same thing. Yeah, but the thing about what Mr. what ben, could that be? Uh, right, uh, I'll give it to you. Let me see if I've got it. Do you have phone. the page as well? Yeah, I'll get it for you. No worries. It's out of, out of Africa. Uh, uh, the will. Hold on, bear with me. I've got it in my scribes. If I, if I show you that, would you accept it, or would you would you uh, would you change your opinion? Because this is a thing. Sometimes no, I'm not. I'm not, uh, um, not one man can. I would compare that with then yeah, other, no. other sources and stuff. Sometimes I mean? because I find sometimes with Muslims, with Kemets, with Christians, you can bring them as many sources as you want. They already made their mind up. Sometimes people ask the questions for the sake of asking questions. I I'm not saying I'm, 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 I'm not saying that's you. I, you know, I, I, hopefully that's not you. I but, let the evidence speak, bro, but I don't let one man with a strong opinion try and come share yeah, that evidence. Yeah, Muslims do the same thing. They'll they'll say they'll quote certain scholars, and when you give them the scholar, that's not a Muslim say, thing. That's a no, man thing. Yeah, human um, beings do that, bro. Yeah, Africa, mother of Western civilization, by Dr. Yusuf A. Ben. Um, let me try to get you the page. Is it so? It's out of Africa, not yes. the, um, Black Man and the Nile and his family. Nah, this one. Okay, give me a sec. No, it's out of Africa. It's out of Africa. Oh. So I've got all of that in my iPad, unfortunately. Um, like I said to you, I, I can bring that tomorrow if you want. We can bring that and I will show you that. So that's no problem at all. Yeah, yeah I could probably find it myself to, yeah. at some point. So way, Africa, way, Mother yeah, Western Civilization, I think you'll find that when, when it talks about the Nubian section and stuff. So. Is, is, is that the only source? Did you get any, that's the, that's did you use any that, sources for the link? Sorry, I beg your pardon. The, the other sources are the, the, the documentation, you know, that. Yeah, I'm more concerned with the the li the, um, the linguistics or like the trans the um the trans translation of the linguistics, if you know what I mean, um, and and the source for that really. So we're gonna give our brother some time to find his information. Um, you know, it's this is this is what I like. This is what we call scholarship right now. So let's get it in, family. Let's get it in, uh, and hopefully, uh, if we can, if we can find it, we can show it to our audience. Uh, um, you know, so they can make up their mind on it as well. Um, yeah. Whilst whilst waiting, um, yeah, Dawa, did you want to say yeah. anything? I'm just looking at some of my research here and going back to basics here. But um, what I'm seeing is that Egypt referred to herself as the Black Lands, and uh, in brackets it says here Keme. Yeah? Alluding to the rich mud from the Nile inundations, the ever encroaching desert was called the Red Lands. This is interesting, you know, because it says, look, the ever encroaching desert, meaning the Sahara, was known as the Red Lands, Dashre. Yeah? And this is in Robert A. Bennett's book, Africa and the Biblical Period. And this is uh, published by a Harvard Theological Review in 1971. And it's on page, I think it's page 488. Uh, but to move on from that as well, I mean, still back to basics here. Yeah? It also mentions that the black fertile soil gave Egypt its name, Kemet, the black. Yeah. And this is in uh, Herman Keese's Ancient Egypt uh, book. Uh, and that's published by University of Chicago Press as well, page 36. Um, what I'm finding interesting here is that there's a clear distinction between the Red Land and the Black Land, and the Red Land is known as the um, the desert area, whereas the Black Land is known as the, you know, where the where the river runs through, which makes the soil very black and rich and fertile, so things can grow. Um, what I also want to point out here is that you know, if you're looking at ancient sources, right, then there is a thing called biblical archaeology, 
I'm sure you'd all agree that there's this is a validated science now. It wasn't back in like the 1950s, 1940s, 1930s. It was a sort of pseudoscience. But today, with so much research being done, it's now a validated science, right? You know, biblical archaeology, right? Um, and, you know, if you're looking at the outlook, I'm not, first of all, I'm a Muslim, right? So really, people might be questioning, well, Muslims might be questioning why I'm doing this research. But, you know, as uh, Brother Cyrus mentioned, truth where they, wherever you find it. Yeah, truth wherever you find it. As you know, look, I'm not a racist person. I've got videos on my channel as a Muslim with titles like Hussein said Muslims are racist. Right? If I was truly that much of a patriot to the religion, right, then, you know, I would not pursue a video like that. Okay? But in, in all fairness, you know, content over everything in myself, we've earned reputations as being, you know, having a lot of integrity on the circuit. So I put the video up there and I recorded it with my honour. But what I want to mention here is the fact that, look, when it comes to history, you know, you've got to look at something like something to do with, you know, because a lot of people in the comments have mentioned, you know, Ham, Shem, and Yafith, and these are basically biblical names, right? So if you look at the four great rivers mentioned in the Old Testament, for example, you know, um, the Nile, the Euphrates, the Tigris, and um, the uh, Gihon. So you've got the Pishon, the Gihon, the Euphrates, and well, the Euf sorry, not the Tigris, but Euphrates, the Gihon, the Pishon, and the Nile, yeah? Um, then we find that the earliest civilizations, the earliest cradles of civilizations, started wherever there were rivers and were in this sort of a geospheric area, right where the equator is. Um, so I'm finding very interesting that you've got a place called Keme, which is the Black Land, then you've got a place called Dashre, which is the red land, and then you've got two other places. Very interesting. Now, I'm not going to go into that in too much detail because over here we're discussing, you know, um, black history. And the other subject we're talking about is slavery. Now, look, we've mentioned the different forms of slavery. Last time we spoke, we spoke about how slavery, you know, the different reasons for why slavery exists. And I brought something to the table which wasn't discussed before, i.e., you know, the fact that in those days you didn't have um, uh, jails or prisons so the criminal if he was irredeemable he would be put into slavery right so we've got this sort of information and everything um, and i find that it's this is still being overlooked you know so it's being played down a little bit and i'm think, i think this is quite an unjust thing that we're doing here as a group you know the fact that in whatever society whatever culture you look at in ancient times if a person was deemed irredeemable by society he was enslaved simple so all these other reasons we're bringing up, for example, yeah, there was chattel slavery and, da, 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 and people came and they invaded and blah, blah, blah. These are what you call byproduct results of slavery. The main reasons were always different. The main reasons were always to do with criminal, the criminal element. Always. So if you're going to start doing fringe science and ignoring the main science here, we're not going to be doing ourselves any justice. And that's what I wanted to say, really. Okay. So my brother, I, I'm curious because you've jumped around quite a bit. I just wanted to know what exactly the points she was making. So you brought up Kemet and Dashoret, um, the Black Land and the Red Lands. Uh, what was that in reference to? I just find it very interesting, the fact that, you know, there's a clear distinction, even though the Sahara is known, you know, is a part of Africa. And a lot of people would think that that is also part of Kemet. But there's a clear distinction in the two books that I've mentioned, in, you know, I've referenced them for you as well, including the page numbers and, you know, who's published them, etc., that there was a distinction made even in ancient times between Kemet, which was the fertile soil, the fertile soil region of the Nile, right, and the you know the, the sort of uh, desert areas, which were not fertile at all. You know, where you might have had a few oases here and there, but weren't known particularly to be hospitable to anybody. Do you see what I mean? And therefore, not considered part of Kemet, because Kemet was known as the fertile land. Do you see what I mean? So there's a distinction here in terms of, you know, if you're looking at history, you have, you have to understand that when you make a claim, you have to examine the claim. And the claim doesn't hold when you think that Sahara was part of the Kemet areas. Because clearly in the ancient times, it wasn't. It really wasn't. Now, some other people might think that, you know, they might broad stroke or broad, broad paint with a, with, a, with, a, with a paintbrush, the idea that, um, uh, you know, Kemet means all of Africa. Well, that's just simply false. That's a falsifiable statement, and it is falsified, because you can clearly see from the historical records that Kemet was a geospheric area that basically encompassed more or less 
northeast. Okay, Africa. my brother, before let me just quickly stop you right there. I don't yeah. think anybody has uh, purported that the yeah. ancient Egyptians or ancient Kemet used uh, the term Kemet to refer to the whole of Africa. Right. Well, thank God for that. Okay. Because I tell you what, in the comments in the comment section, I've been reading otherwise. I mean, obviously, from here, we've, in the two, we've been we've been, we've been utilizing. We consider the Titans. No, we, we consider Titans. We won't say that. Yeah. But just for the sake of clarification, for the people in the comment sections, I had to clarify. Yeah. 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 No, we, we utilize the term Kemet in its modern usage, modern usage to talk about the Black Lands, uh, i.e., Africa and beyond. Wait, wait, wait. It's so modern that, usage. That, Does that make sense? No. Now you're confusing again. When you say the modern usage, why move away from that when, when, it, when, it suits your, when it suits you? Why not just stick to the same premise? If you're talking about ancient history, we should look at it in terms of ancient history, right? Modern usage, why call it Kemet when no one calls it Kemet today? Everyone calls it Africa. Why, why, okay. why, why, why split it again? Because, I don't understand. Why would you do that? We, because, because we have the right, right uh, to uh, self-identify and choose which words to describe ourselves rather than allowing other people such as, uh, you know, the so-called victors, so the so-called uh, colonizers, the so-called enslavers. Uh, we choose not to utilize their terminologies upon us as so-called black okay, African fair people. Fair and fair we point. generate our own words based upon our own languages. That's why. Okay, Does that make point. sense? By, yeah, by that standard, we can't call Arabia Saudi Arabia anymore either then, right? Because I don't want to, I, I wouldn't like to, wait, 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 by the same standard, listen to what I'm saying here, like Caleb, yeah? By the same standard, what I'm saying is this, yeah? If you're going to, if you're going to say, I can call myself what I like because I can self-identify, then as far as Muslims go and their Muslim homeland is Arabia, right? We don't have to identify with, for example, you know, calling it Saudi Arabia anymore. You know, because yeah, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, in 2011 I released a video called House of Saudi History. It's on a channel called Muslim Matrix at the moment. It's only a three and a half, four minute video. And you can have a look at that. And I've made my case very clear there in that video, right? And I actually narrated that video as well. So you can have a look, you know, just type it in, in, in YouTube, House of Saud, the history, yeah? By a channel called Muslim Matrix. It's still got my same avatar as well. So, you know, you can see the shape and everything. So what I'm brother. saying is this, well, my point is this, yeah? If you can self-identify, then so can the Muslims as well. And then you cannot call us Saudi Arabians or call the land Saudi Arabia, but rather Arabia or the wilderness. Do you okay. see what I mean? We can or even call, we'll or call even that call land. Dash, or even call it Dashray if you want. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> if Dashray means redlands, i.e., for example, where the sands are. All right, my brother. Then yeah. Just time out real quickly. Uh, we'll call the land whichever name uh, you and the uh, mass of our people choose to call the land. For, so, for example, when you go into certain areas in Africa, okay, somebody might be you may be called you may call them Nigerian, okay. For example, let's go to the landmass of Nigeria. Most Nigerian people don't self-identify as Nigerians. They will self-identify with the region that they're from, the ethnicity that they're from. They will tell you, "No, I'm a Hausa." Uh, this is Hausa land. No, I'm Yoruba. This is Oyo land. No, I'm Ibo. This is, um, I don't know, uh, uh, Imo state, etc., etc., etc. So most people in Ghana are the same thing. They will self-identify as Ashanti and so forth and so forth. So whichever, whatever people choose to self-identify as, they have the right to do that. Just the same way as in ancient times, Africa, generally speaking, from the Arabic uh, colonizers, they called the whole of Africa uh, Bilad el Sedan, meaning the Black Lands. So we're simply utilizing that same terminology, uh, but utilizing an ancient African word, which is Kemet, which, which literally means the Black Lands. Does that make sense? That's all we're doing. Okay. okay? That's all we're doing. There's nothing too okay, deep so about asking, it. If you're if asking you me, does it make sense? If you're asking me, does it make sense? Then yes, it does. But what I'm saying is, that if you're going to do that, can you be consistent? Because the inconsistencies, inconsistencies where we're seeing the problem here, right? For example, what happens here now is you're going from race to tribalism, yeah? And that's where the inconsistency happens. For example, I'll give you a great example. I'm an Indian, right? India is known in India as Bharat, yeah? As a whole land. But then inside of India, you've got many, many regions. Like, for example, the region I'm from is called Gujarat. There's so many different, different regions. In fact, it's a bit silly, right? But... Some people get very, very tribal because of the region, from the regions they come from. And there are over 100 languages. You see what I mean? But if you're going to talk about Indian history, and in particular about a certain place, 
then you've got to go with that historical name, the historical reference. Otherwise, things get confusing. Because look, you've got people from Rajasthan inside of Gujarat. And they're going to say, look, you know what, I identify myself as Rajasthani. And just because they've got an opinion, and let's face it, everyone's got an opinion, just like everyone's got a bum hole, yeah? Doesn't necessarily make it right. You know, he might say something ridiculous, like, yeah, you know what, Rajasthan was once part of Gujarat. Or Gujarat was once part of Rajasthan. You know, so, and therefore, I don't want to believe what you're saying. These, these, these things do get very, very ridiculous. What I'm saying is you have to be very, very consistent with what you're saying. Otherwise, the inconsistency, inconsistency gets very confusing. I mean, I agree so, with you in principle, but I'm saying that what I'm seeing here is no consistency. So let me get your argument. What would you like us to do? That's all, that's all I want to know, just so we can move on. What would you like us to say or do? Si simple, simple, brother. I mean, I would just say, just be consistent. Because look, I'll be honest with you, I do, I've studied Kemet history, right? I've studied African history, right? And I've studied, you know, for example, you know, and I haven't looked into South Africa because I find that South African history is very good. Real, real quickly, the Germans bro, came through. Real quickly, because you, you took yeah. around the point. What would you like us to do? That's what I'm asking you. What would you like us to do? Be, consi be consistent in your terminologies. In, in what sense? Just, just so we can understand if you. You're, if you're, if you're going to study history, like ancient history, then stick with the historical terms and don't conflate them with the modern terms like, like what you're doing today. Okay. Simple. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, I, I think I get you. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, let's move on. So, so, um, Saracen, are you back? I am. So I apologize. Uh, I got my phone got disconnected. You might hear a baby in the background. Uh, I'm on babysitting duty right now. So if you hear a baby in the background, I apologize for the background noise. Okay, but anyway, no um, just the, bro the brother asked me for a question. He asked me a reference point, actually. He asked me um, about the Dr. Ben quote, right? Um, right. It is Do uh, Africa, Mother of Western Civilization, page 104. So Africa, Mother of Western Civilization. Um, yeah. uh, who was it? Uh, Kofi. So if you could find that Africa, the Mother of Western Civilization, page 104. Yeah, I'm going to look into that now. Okay, um, Saracen, have you got the, uh, the quote? I believe it says, I seize their women was a direct statement of Osinatan II. Why did he, the conqueror seize their victim women? To rape them. When they were raped, the offspring were treated as one of the victor's children. Certainly the Nubians did the same to the Egyptians when they were the victors. That's pretty deep stuff, man. That's what I say. I, I don't think Gabs has done the research. Now, I'm, I'm not, so this is not a personal thing. And, you know, where I'm wrong, like, you know, you, you, you guys mentioned some points about um, some Muslim scholars who tried to justify. Initially, I was like, nah, that's not the case. When I did the research and I looked into natural slavery, I said, you know what, you guys have got a very valid point there. And me and Kalam had that discussion. Now I'm completely on Kalam's side on that. You know, that's why we condemn that. But equally, you guys have to just, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. It's fine. Do your research, you know, come back. You're not going to beat me on this one because I know I'm correct on this. This is historical fact. You know, I've got other issues that I do want to discuss how Islam is the greatest black power movement. Early Islam is the greatest black power movement. And I know people are going to be shocked with that. But, let you know, let's do that debate, Kalam. Get, get Sara on. I want Sara, you know. Uh, he thinks Muhammad was a white man. Boy, he's got a shock. Okay. Before we do that, let me just go back to Gabs. Uh, sorry, Kofi. I saw you on mute, Mike. Yeah, sorry. I was just going to ask him to quote the page again and the book. 104, brother. 104. Page 104. 104. And what was yeah. it? The Mother of Western Civilization? Indeed. Right. Thanks. Okay. So, um, Gabs, um, did you have anything to say on that? No, Medea. Mm -hmm. Did you have anything to say on that? Yeah, um, basically, um, the brother Saracen, um, I hear you. I hear. I hear that point where you said I haven't looked that book, um, and you said um, you keep saying stuff like Gab, you're not going to beat me on this thing and all this stuff there. But if you clearly heard what heard what I said earlier, um, I said to you that from the from the from the knowledge that I have, yeah, from the knowledge that I've had from the stuff that I've researched at this present time, I haven't seen things like that. So I'll tell you now, I haven't read that book. I haven't seen it. I've heard the book, I haven't read it. Do you know what I mean? So then, like I do, I will actually take, I'm not the type of person to just agree and say, yeah, 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 uh, the Egyptians, the, the Kemites didn't do this and do that. If I find information, like I just said, that backs up what you're saying, so I'd have to read that book. If, 
if I have the, if I have the information that backs up that claim, go and look at other sources that that basically backs up that same claim, and and verify it as a hundred percent true, then yeah, I'll take it. But I'm not just going to read one book and 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 see one thing and say yeah, do you know what? Look, they was doing this. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't make no sense to me because a lot of people read books and and come up with loads of claims. Do you see what I'm saying? And there's no there's no truth behind it. So like I said. Like I said to you, I'll do research and find out. So I don't know why you're telling me about doing the research. I already told you I'll do the research and learn. So Hallelujah. like I said, we'll go and look into that. I'll look into that and see what comes off it. You Res- know what I mean? Respect, respect. Like, and, and that's what we're asking for. We're asking for not just, this is not about Muslim or Kemet thing, you know. Yes, it's all hype. Let me just tell you straight on the people in the chat. It's all hype. Um, it's about in bettering ourselves it's about admitting you know this is history this is how history works you know muslims did bad things empires and they weren't individual muslims they were empires who used religion uh, similarly with kemet the ancient chemists used uh, you know certain things these are human beings we're dealing with human problems you know what i'm saying so you know and i, I respect you you know you you know if you're going to do the research have a look and you know that that's what we're asking for. We're saying just tell a full history to people, and you know, hopefully, you know, that's how we're all going to improve. So, you know, I'm I'm going to tone down the hype a little bit because number one, if I shout too much, the baby will cry in the back. Uh, but number two, you know, let, let, you know, we want to keep it respectful, and you know, I, and, and like I said, I've got a lot of respect for Kalam and Gabs. You know, they're two of my favorite people in the park, um, and you know, and I love, I love the, I love the vibe there. You know, what you see always sometimes on the TV or you know on these shows is, you know, there there isn't hatred. There's a lot of there's a beautiful community there, and we learn from each other. I've learned a lot from Gabs, so you know, I, I respect that, my brother. One question I was going to ask you, brother Saracen, quickly, sorry. One question I was going to ask you is, um, what was um, what was the point that you was trying to show by um, bringing up the stuff to do with um, the slavery in Kemet? Because was it you try was you basically trying to show that um, the Kemets were just as worse? Because I remember in your in your presentation you were saying it was just as bad as the Arab and the European slavery because. Obviously, we have, we have, I don't know about today, but obviously, you know, um, even history even says that the Arab slave trade was one of the worst, even worse than the European slave trade of the stuff that happens. Even so today, like the other uh, brother said in the presentation at Speaker's Corner, he said the stuff's still going on today where, where Arabs are, are, are enslaving black people and they're still being castrated. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm trying to understand, are you talking about a point in time are you trying to say because at a point in time something happened or are you talking about throughout thoroughly throughout history and 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 obviously the tortures and the, um, the chaos that um, the Arab slave trade and the European slave trade caused on, um, on. The thing is, first of all, um, I don't accept the premises that the Arab slave trade was worse than other slave trades. Um, I'm not going to defend the Arabs. Like I said, it wasn't just the Arabs, it was the Persians as well, you know. They would enslave white people. This is a fact. You know, more white people were enslaved um, initially up until the Ottoman period uh, by Arabs than black people. That's just a fact. Um, and you know, so I'm not gonna. I'm not. Isn't you know, slavery? Like I said, I don't like really comparing slavery. You know, injustice is injustice. You know, when we're going around. Oh, my slavery is worse than your slavery. You know, ultimately, it's all of it is disgusting and sick. You know, and that's what we need to get out. But what I would say is, when you got two thousand years of slavery, two thousand years of Kemet slavery, let's be let's be frank. Yeah, uh, Islam hasn't even been around more than fifteen. It's not even like fifteen hundred years old. And there was periods, and now there is slavery in Mauritania, uh, in Libya. Is Foul, it's disgusting. And myself and people like Dower Digital, you know, you see us, we're working to expose those idiots, you know, and you guys are all, you know, we're all, we're all against all of that. You know, is that an Islamic problem? No. Is it, is it a retard Muslim problem? Yes. But this is what I'm saying. The problem that I find with some of the Kemet people, and I'm going to be straight up and honest with you right now, is you lot deal with race. We deal with truth. 
everything has got a race. You know what I'm saying? Everything has got a race angle. Where, you know, black people do this, black people. I defend getting justice against Arabs, blacks, whites, Asians, whoever. And that's just how I roll, you know. And I, I appreciate that, you know, the, we, we don't deny the black experience. Black experience is real and it's, you know, and we accept that. But you, we also, you also need to, when you're educating people, you need to be honest in, in the Kemet history as well, you know. Um, and I feel that sometimes the way that you guys go about it, and not particularly you or Kalam Gabs, but there's other people out there, sometimes the way they have to slander Muslims, you know, there has to sorry, be this sorry, thing about sorry, Muslims. Sorry, sorry Shashan, if I can just interject quickly as well. Um, what you're saying is absolutely correct. You know, it does seem to me that the um, black people from the park do go on sometimes like black people can do no wrong. When here we're here, we are as Muslims admitting the wrongs of Muslims. We've come two steps further than you have in this sense. And I'll go take a third step now as well and mention that when the caliphate wars were happening, these were caliphs no, no, of different no, regions no, no, fighting no, each other. No, Wait a minute. Hey, Dawa, Dawa, I can't let now. You can't come on and say that. Listen, I'm not yeah. going to let you say that, bro. Because right now you're chatting shit. Yeah, I'm not oh. going to let you say that, bro. I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not going to let you come on and tell me. Let me finish that my point. Then you can make your point. No, 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 no. Because I'm going to make your point. point. I'm going to no, address just... that first point you said. No, I'm going to finish my point. I'm making my point. Yeah. You said, uh, hold on. Let me respect with Gabriel. We agree with said, Gabriel. I haven't cut you in it. I haven't cut. Allow me to finish my point, and then I'll let you say whatever you want to say. Right? Honestly, let me allow me to finish my point, please. Right? What I'm saying is this: Yeah, that when the caliphate wars happened between Muslims, different different caliphates, yeah. A lot of the times, it was Muslims enslaving Muslims as well, which I think Saracen has not, you know, has neglected to mention. I want to mention that as well, because there were kind of and the Prophet peace be upon him mentioned this would happen, and the actual word used was haraj, which means Muslims killing Muslims, not just enslaving. Look, in, in, at least with enslavement, enslavement, you've got a chance to buy your freedom or to get free in through slavery itself, yeah. But when you kill someone, there's no chance of having a life back. Now, this is the point I was making, right? It was more this, but you know, and by the way. Gabs, when I'm saying this, I'm not, I'm not trying to generalize and paint everyone, but I'm saying this is the vibe that I'm getting, right? But now I'm going to allow you to make your point and I'm going to mute myself, brother. Go ahead. Well, first things first, yeah, yeah. That, that whole thing about the black people in the park having a vibe saying that black people can do no wrong, right there, that, that doesn't make no sense because you haven't even taken the time to ask them or even, even ask them the questions they even break down. No one in their right mind will tell you that our uh, black people can do no wrong. That doesn't make no damn sense. Look at us today. You know what I mean? Look at us in the world today, fam. So, so what you're saying, that doesn't make no sense at all. No one ain't saying black people are the best. Uh, ah, we can do no wrong. Or this, uh, da, 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 da. What's happened? Do you know what I'm saying? All it is is that we're trying to deal with the information and the, the historical side to bring out because a lot of our history and stuff has been stolen and not given to us in the right way and not been pulled, portrayed to us in the right light. So we have to do the research and bring out the best because for the last couple of years or thousand years that I know, or hundreds of years, in school systems and stuff like that, they even show the negative side of black history. They ain't been teaching you the right side. The only time you don't know about the good stuff is if you go and do that research. And that's what me, Kalam, and the brothers in the park are trying to bring out. But it's funny that as soon as we want to start bringing out the good side, let me finish. I feel you, I do feel you. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. As soon as we start going to bring out the good side in our history, it's like it's funny that a lot of people are starting to get a bit itchy and scratchy. And now they're going to bring up, hold on, but you guys are doing this. But you guys are slaves. You guys are doing this. Oh, but no, but you can't be from there. You guys, are, it sounds, sounds kind of kiddish. Do you know what I mean? Just because someone on the good side of the stuff, people are feeling all, all antsy and get a bit nervous. It doesn't make no sense. Do you know what I mean? All we're doing is just bringing our info. And that's all. Go on, bro, Kalam. Yo, Gabs, real quickly, um, your mic sounds hella choppy, hella choppy. So I don't know if you can uh, um, do something about that and then, and then get back in again. Uh, but it's yeah. hella choppy out there. And it's still choppy. Is it choppy now? Choppy now? Yeah, man, it's still hitting that choppy. There's like, like a pop, crackle and pop that's going on. All right. Um, go and say something. Can you hear me? Hello? Yeah. Possibly could be. Uh, it's a bit better. Talk it's for better. now. It's a bit better. Uh, Kalam, can I say something quickly? Before you do, before you do. Uh, back to this. You know, my brother Samson has definitely brought up something very interesting to hopefully some of you guys' um, attention uh, and to do with slavery. 
slavery within inside of ancient Egypt, Kemet uh, to be exact. Um, but unfortunately, I don't think, you know, we can equate, from what I've seen, we cannot equate uh, prisoners of war and what's taking place in ancient Egypt to what was taking place uh, via European uh, slavery, uh, via Arab slavery, or even uh, Greek or Roman slavery. Um, none of those things can actually compare, um, you know, Kemet cannot compare to the atrocities that was taking place place in those particular areas. Uh, things such as uh, prisoners of wars, captives of wars that then had to, um, you know, pay off their particular debts via indentured servitude and so forth. And uh, after they paid off their debt, they, uh, you know, they have their right to actually uh, purchase their freedom or to, uh, yeah, to purchase their freedom to be um, free citizens within inside of the um, Inside of the empire itself, they have the ability to be educated. They have the ability to own land. They have the ability to intermarry, um, you know, with the comedics themselves. Um, I don't think we can equate what was taking place in Arab slavery with uh, what was taking place in Kemet. Uh, these things weren't nowhere near as what was taking place in Arab or Islamic or Middle Eastern slavery, where they were actually doing slave raids, where they were actually going in into these people's countries and, uh, um, you know, literally having a propaganda against them in order to enslave them, uh, purchasing slaves, selling these slaves, castrating these slaves, um, you know, doing all these heinous things uh, to black African people and even to other individuals as well as like the Europeans. I don't think there's no way in hell that anyone can compare the two. Even, um, you know, the majority as I've read on, on, on the topics of uh, so-called slavery in ancient Egypt, speak about uh, um, it wasn't at slavery as we know slavery as it today. It was something called uh, serf, serfdom that was taking place. Uh, prisoners of wars, serfdom, and things of that nature. So I think it's, it's very false to try to equate both of them together at all. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I've got to say on, on that particular topic there so go ahead saracen i will like yeah, thanks to say that. something all thanks right that, po po um after saracen yeah. i'm gonna let you come okay in. yeah thanks bro so basically um that's where i think you're wrong kalam with all due respect um and i think that's the narrative that's often uh, portrayed and i think it's a gross injustice to the people who suffered slavery uh, and, and servitude. There was definitely servitude in ancient Egypt, no doubt about it, but there was actual real talk slavery. And like I said, you know, I'm not going to go too deep into this. Um, I'm going to let people do their own research, but I've given you a source already. Just go to, even, in fact, just even go to Wikipedia, like I said, go to slavery in ancient Egypt. And you can, like, people will say, oh, well, I was using, you know, Wikipedia. The thing is, the, read the articles there's links to it number one two three four whatever you know and it's got the references at the bottom read the references check it out this is what the experts are saying i don't even need so, to do too so could you could you state something that we can um, yeah you know? yeah sure so chattel slavery slaves were mostly war captives including civilians not part of military forces became royal sources the pharaoh would resettle captives by moving them into colonies for labor giving them temples, giving them rewards for deserving individuals, but using them as soldier as booty. Some chattel slaves began as free people who would be found guilty of committing illicit acts and forced to give up their freedom. So, so we know that's one chattel slavery, um, and the quote goes on, and there's a reference for that. Bonded labor. Ancient Egyptians were able to sell them. Hold on, my brother. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Hold on, let's do this so all our audience members can see it so we can be yeah. nice and fair. And I'm going to put it out for you. So yeah. what you just read there were, um, was chattel slavery, right? Correct. Chattel slaves was mostly um, of captives from war. Correct. Okay. okay. All captives, including civilians, not a part of the military forces, became a royal resource. Indeed. The pharaoh uh, would then resettle the captives by moving them into colonies for labor, giving them to temples, giving them as rewards to deserving individuals and giving them to his soldiers as booty. Some chattel slaves began as free people who were found guilty of committing illicit acts and were forced to give up their freedom. Other chattel slaves were born into the life uh, from a slave mother. And this is from the Oxford Encyclopedia of Ancient Egypt. 
And that's um, from Dr. From Redford. Our, that's from that's written by Dr. Redford, the expert and that's from on Do- this. And that's and he, from Dr. Redford. And I, I would personally say to you, um, on this particular source right here, um, I wouldn't disagree um, with what is being stated in terms of, um, you know, captives of war, etc., and individuals who are criminals within side of the society. I would not disagree with that. Um, but again, that's not the same type of slavery that was taking place with inside of, um, you know, Islamic slavery, Europe. European slavery, etc., etc., etc. These individuals weren't captive wars. They were literally slave raids that was gone in to kidnap the people, um, subjugate those people, and to enslave those people. But it's two different things. No, no, they're not. Because does exactly that make sense? No, because the ancient Egyptians did that as well. If you want, I'll give you another source for that. And we also, I think I sent you the source earlier, but Scabs hasn't had a chance to have a look at it. But they've actually, uh, they actually castrated Nubians. They castrated them. And I, I think I sent that to you in the email because I wanted to, I wanted this show to be fair. Do you know what I mean? I've made points. I wanted Gabs to have my slides. I wanted you to have my slides. But, you know, we've, we've got to be. So Tutu Carmen's in, in the book Tutu Carmen's uh, War. Uh, sorry, Tutu Carmen's Armies on page 93. Egyptian pharaohs were representative of gods on earth at the beginning of the ancient Egyptian uh, kingdom. Um, it goes on to say, bear with me. Yeah, so, so we, I'm just trying to find out the reference for it. I don't, I don't want to misquote this. I, I've put the um, Dr. Ben book in the um, chat and I've sent it to you, Callum, as well, so you can show it on the screen if you want. Yeah, yeah. So, on, um, so yeah, so beg your pardon. So, on David Connor's paper, it wasn't it? So, David Connor, Egypt's Views of Others, yeah, on page 155, he writes that the Egyptians uh, would. Uh, show their executed pr- prisons humility. They cut off their hands and they had their penises removed. I mean, that that tells you something. That's not normal slavery, my friend. That's not that's not servitude. Oh, you know. Could you, could, you, could you repeat that again, sir? So, David O'Connor, Egypt's views of others. All right, I'll read it out fully. The ancient Egyptians distinguished sharply between themselves and foreigners, i.e., non-Egyptians. Hostility uh, expressed towards foreigners in Egypt literature seems to be frequent, consistent from modern perspective, down, downright disquiet, disquieting. Pharaoh Menor, Menoratapa, 1,213 to 1,214 BC, expl- uh, 204 BC, explicitly commanded and defeated Libyan invaders uh, Impulled on the south of Memphis, nor was such brutality restricted to the New Kingdom and later periods. On the Palata, the Egypt's earliest historical pseudo historical records, bound prisoners are shown as executed and humiliated with their heads and pe- penises cut off. And then we've got that in position. So, he, can he carries, yeah, gone. So question, are that is are those slaves or are those executed? Um, so, so these are executed, but then it goes on to say that they also use them as um, eunuchs. So what, what they would do is they use it, you know, as uh, so they have, once they've got your uh, penises chopped off, they'd use them in temples. Um, and, and that's another thing they'll do. We've got pictures of hands being are chopped you, off. Are you, are you- are you sure that they used people in as eunuchs? I've got, I've got something with eunuchs here. I have got something with eunuchs. I'll I don't think you will ever find anything such as eunuchs yeah. with inside of ancient Egypt. You, you definitely had eunuchs. Foreigners, had foreigners, they, they were, I'm just letting you know there was a law yeah. against foreigners for entering into uh, ancient Egyptian temples. So for you to now tell me that there were uh, foreigners who were captives, who were now uh, supposedly castrated and then yes. uh, employed as servants, or, or priests within inside of uh, temples sounds very um, you know very strange, very strange to me. We're talking about we're talking about two thousand years of history, Halam. So when was that law implemented? That's what I'd ask you on that. Would you like me to uh, bring it up? Yeah, I mean, if you don't have it to hand, it's fine. I'm because I'm, uh-huh. I've asked you off the top of your head. Obviously, you, you, I'm just I'm just saying that the, I've read, <laughs> and, and that's what I said. I'll try to bring my evidence for that. And you can obviously refute me on that, but from my understanding, from what I read, I've realised, I've, I've read that there were eunuchs, and they were used. 
um, your point on also we are, another thing that people have to understand is that this was a Nile Valley civilization. It was a, a, an empire, but it was no way like the size of an empire like the Muslim empire. The Muslim empire from its peak, look how much land it carried. Look at the population that it had. So it's, 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 I think it's unfair to you know, say, oh, Muslims were far worse because they did a lot more. The whole the world had changed by then. So we have to put, put things in relative perspective as well. What did you did you just say that the Islam um did you say that the Kemet um empire wasn't as big as the Islamic empire? Is that what you just said? A hundred percent. So how far did the um Kemet Empire stretch? From my understanding, it went um across the Nile Valley, it went into parts of uh, Mesopotamia, it went down to Syria, um and it went up uh, a little bit as well. I mean, the Muslim empire, especially the Umayyad empire, that was the biggest black black power empire in the history. Okay, hold, on, hold, on, hold on a sec. So you said, so just basically to Mesopotamia, is that what you just said? Yeah? Uh, yeah, as far as I know, yeah. So, 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 okay, so then you'd have to go and do the research and find out how far the Kemetic um, empire stretched. I have. I'll yeah? show you go a map. Do you want me to show you a map? Do you want to do a, do you want to do a map comparison? Go show me, go show me. I'll have to, I'll have to, yeah. I'll have to get you the map. We'll do a map comparison, maybe next week then, because I'm not in the park this Sunday. I'll show you the Kemet Empire, and I'll show you the uh, Umayyad Empire when it first started. But if you want me to go even further and go and show you the Muslim Empire, the head, obviously, there's no comparison. There's no comparison. The biggest black power empire in the history of the world was the Umayyad Empire. The Umayyad Empire, they were, they were for all intensive purposes, you know, what we would call as blacks. Uh, we had the whitewashing of the Umayyads by the Persians under the Abbasids after 650, and then followed up by the Turks when this whole race thing, this, you know, the black acknowledgement within Islam was changed. You know, that's just, the, that's the reality and that's the fact. But yeah, you can't, uh, you know, Gabs, I'll, I'll say to you next week, if you want, I'll show you that as well. Um, hopefully you'll be able to change your mind. And I know I'm bringing. I know I'm bringing stuff that's shocking people today. Oh, you raised some good points there, Cyrus, and my brother. You raised some good points, but you know what? In fairness, you no. Know, what it comes down to is everyone doing their own research, but doing it comparatively, doing it fairly, and getting a balanced viewpoint. You know, just because you know, just because I'm a Muslim doesn't mean I have to. I have to now go and support the Arabic view. You know, I will talk against people, even if they're my own race or my own religion, as long as I know they did wrong. I have to represent fairly. You know, otherwise I'm going to be misleading myself over a bias. What's the point in doing that? Do you know what I mean? So I also ask of anyone else who is studying these topics to do the same. Yeah. Do not feed your bias. That's not a good thing to do. It's not the right way to do things. Rather, you should study things, you know, um, in the most honest manner you know, possible, you know, without trying to push a, 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 you know, a certain narrative you think should be justified because your gut feeling tells you so. I'll tell you something, a lot of gut feelings took people who were in power into war and they weren't justified. History proves this. So, if, you know, we should learn from our histories collectively and know not to make the same mistakes that those who came before us have made. We're now living in, you know, what many consider to be the end times, right? Um, so, and I can even clearly see why. It's because people are not learning from their past mistakes. You know, yeah, history fixes, so. com completely agree. And I would say to, there's people in the chat asking, oh, what Muslims were, Umayyads were black. I'm saying we've got inscriptions from the Persians. We've got inscriptions from the Chinese describing the so-called Arab invaders as black skinned. You know, I can bring you another quote from Dr. Ben of what he said the Prophet Muhammad was. You know, Kalam would probably even agree with me on this point. You know, he, Kalam made an excellent point a few weeks ago. He said that if you look at how uh, Arabia was and, and, and much of Muslim history is being whitewashed, yeah? Let's just tell you that. But initially, it was the it was under Ethiopian kind of the Aksum kingdom. They'd go, they'd raid Arabia. Now the fact is, when in them times, just like in Nubia, just like in ancient Egypt, when tribes got raided, the women got taken. When women got taken, their children would come out certain colors. So there was a mixture of colors. You look at some of the companions. This is a long thing. Honestly, I'll need a whole show for this. But if you look at like some of the companions of the Prophet, Jet. 
black. If you look at the early Arab Raiders, jet black, there was a whole tribe, Bani Zura, for example, black. And that was the tribe of the mother of the Prophet, Amina, radiallahu ta'ala anhu. So, you know, we can, we can go there. We can go there. We can look at what, what the early, you know, the, the Sassanids said, the Persians said. We can look at what the Chinese said about the invaders. The biggest black power movement ever was the black, was the Umayyad Empire. Unfortunately, then, you know, Persians took over the Abbasid 650. You know, you see these pictures of Imam Hussein as a white man, you know, etc. None of this is, you know, we, we need to get that history back. And I'm, I'm here to bring it. I'm here to represent the truth. And hopefully if anyone wants to join me, you know, that's what we're calling for. We're calling for the truth. <laughs> Saracen, Saracen, can I ask you a question, yeah? Um, you see the 2000 year period you said about um, the ancient Egyptians um, enslaving um, Nubians and that. Um, which, which, which period was that from? Can you give me the reference for that, please? Give me, give me a second, brother. Give me a second. Yeah. Yo, can you guys just talk between yourselves while I just deal with my baby at the moment? Oh, you probably hear him in the background. Yeah, oh, cool. I'll go back to you. If, you, if anyone wants to come in, let me come in. May right, cool. I say something? I'll put the um, Callum, I'm sorry, I'll, Callum, I'll put the Dr. Ben um, book in the chat if you want to put it up on the screen. Okay, I'm unable to see that now. Let me just go to P.O. to give me some time to put it up. So, P.O., go ahead, King. Oh, thank you for having me. Um, I'm listening to the whole discussion, and I'm, you see, I'm not from your community or something. Um, about uh, the main point was from the beginning, there was a discussion with a Muslim guy tried to explain that the uh, Kemet guys do the same thing. Yeah. So, uh, and he will try to explain that this is racism. Yeah. Uh, and I think before, I think racism includes slavery. Slavery was there. It was in the ancient time, there was this normal thing. But I think when slavery became uh, like an institution, you know what I mean? Not you take slaves, you have them at home, or you do, you can do it with all people bad things. But if it becomes institutional, then it becomes racism. So what you have to find out in all your research, not to find out who done worse or I did that and I did that. Look at it, what was the intention behind it? Was it taking war? slaves or was it like uh, to uh, yeah to make another race extinct this is what be interesting for me i'm i'm an atheist sorry nobody knows me and i'm looking at all of your discussions yeah and uh, yes this will be for me the interesting thing can we find in the Kemen tradition this is an institutional thing or and can we find it at the Muslim tradition? And then when we find out this, then we can talk which is worse. Because uh, 2,000 years ago, everybody, everybody took slaves. Okay? There's no point. I don't think there was no society who did not. Yeah, and uh, but the guy in the video tried to excuse the Muslim thing with the Kemet thing. So if he wants to excuse this, this is the normal tactics, he read that wrong, so I can do it too. This is the excuse. So for oh, me... Sorry, bro, I have to interrupt you here. This is not what we're trying to do, bro, honestly. If you're yeah. gonna if you're gonna take this kind of narrative, then this us versus them, when this is supposed to be a learning experience, yeah. No, and I'm sorry. I just I just um, then you do Were you referring to me or were you referring to Saracen? Because uh, I haven't said anything of the sort, and I haven't heard Saracen say anything of the sort either. Seriously, I haven't. Maybe you're reading wrongly into what he was saying because I'm not catching this narrative at all. I saw the, the video about uh, an hour ago or something. Yeah, and uh, what I saw was a guy with the tablet, and no, I don't want 
no one's position. This is not my point. This is not my point. I don't. I don't say he's bad or this one is bad, because I'm not. I'm. I'm from outside. I wanted to know if you talk about the things. Are you talking about something like, uh, yeah, institute? You know, if you, I don't. I, I, I think everybody took slaves in those times. Okay, and then you cannot talk what is better or what is worse. You cannot talk about it. Was there an agenda behind it? So this is what I would like to know. Okay. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, you know, my brother made a very fair point. What was the, um, you know, the rationale behind uh, the certain slaves with inside of, let's say, the comedic, um, the comedic empire versus the rationale behind the slaves with inside of, let's use this, the Middle Eastern, i.e., Islamic um, empire as well. So, um, I don't know if Saracen or Dawa Digital can actually explain it from, um, yeah, you know, their, um, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, keep, hold on, keep your mics muted, sure, keep sure. your mics muted, I haven't finished. Um, so, I don't know if you could explain it from your particular tradition as to why they actually, or the rationale, the justification for actually taking slaves. Um, but definitely from the comedic uh, point of view, the justification for the captivity of these individuals uh, was several. Uh, first of all, the reason why they actually, um, you know, went into these particular areas and these lands uh, were for war. Okay, there were battles that were being take were taking place. Um, you know, wherever is economic or social issues that was taking place, more time with inside of the um, actual archaeology or the accounts recorded upon the steles or temples or uh, with inside of the records and the papyruses it usually talks about a revolt or an uprising that was taking place in these uh, so-called foreign lands um that ancient egypt or kemet had a uh, power control or dominion over or it could have been issues to do with um criminal activities taking place within those areas stealing cattle, etc 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 and then uh, an army will now therefore march into these areas to actually um you know subdue the uprising or to calm it and so forth and if uh you know just by the mere fact of the numbers didn't actually um you know calm the situation then there was a war or fighting or battle that would ensue till ensues um you know individuals are killed um and then usually there is a surrender that, that takes place. With the surrender, uh, certain individuals may be taken as captives and then relocated. And that's usually when uh, it is individuals who are very, very prominent, noble figures who are very prominent, who may cause an uprising uh, within a particular area. They would be relocated, not necessarily as slaves, but uh, as uh, captives of war and relocated into a particular area where they have their own colony to live, uh, but very far removed from the area that they were originally in, uh, just to subdue that itself. Otherwise, they were uh, captives who were, um, you know, let's say, uh, warriors and servants uh, of those particular towns that were having these wars, and they would be put into a uh, servitude. I don't. I don't think there is a, actually a word within the Kemetic um, language itself for slaves, uh, so to speak. But there was a word for servitude, and these individuals had the had the ability uh, to be servants, not the ability to be slaves, where they are uh, being punished or beaten or doing all these bad things like that. I'm not saying that these servants weren't beaten because they were, um, but they also had the freedom to actually have social mobility, social mobility where they can actually uh, move up in the system. They can actually buy their properties. They can uh, buy uh, chattel. They can buy um, animals. They can buy uh, whatever it is. They can marry with themselves or with the community itself. They were just seen as normal people with inside of the society. They can rise to great heights, even to becoming pharaohs, etc., etc. So there was nothing stopping them and such where they are seen as slaves, subhuman, or anything of that nature itself. Um, any other issues as why these people would be... Adam, you know what? Hi, so hats off to you. Hats off to you, Callum. You've done. I don't know. I, I agree with you one hundred percent with what you're. I can't really add to that. But I will say, you know, honestly, I think what you just like um, summarized is very much my opinion regarding the different types of slavery and why they happen when they happen and what kind of powers the slaves or the servants had. And I'm glad you made that distinction as well. 
I think that was a lovely, lovely way to explain it. And if you've done a marvelous job, wallahi, you have, right? Now, what I will say is that there is this issue which Gabs raised, and I think Gabs has made a very potent point here, which is that, you know, a lot of Africans feel, sorry, I should say Kemet, because I don't want to offend nobody. A lot of Kemet feel that their history has been stolen from them, right? Um, look, you know, I can make the same claim about Indians. Persians can make the same claim about their own people. Talk of the Greeks, funny enough, right? Even though, even though they record a lot of history. And the reason being is because it comes down to, you know, and I don't mean to, I don't mean to say this in a demeaning sense, but it comes down to ignorance. Like, I, I, I ask you to put your, to theorize a situation, okay? Let's talk about slavery. Now, as I mentioned, and you mentioned this as well, first of all, with the criminal element, there were no prisons, there were no jails. Would a nation itself record this in their histories when it's quite embarrassing for them to record it in their histories that, look, our people were so bad, you know, when they were, when they were doing crime, we had to sell them off in slave, slave camps, you know, to, regurg, you know, to sort of reimburse those who had been done wrong. Would they do that? No, they wouldn't. Because it doesn't make a nation look big. It doesn't make them look strong. It doesn't make them look united. It doesn't make them look like they've got a decent society or that they're civilized. However, the times they did record it was in times of war or conquest. So when you get history painting a certain narrative, it doesn't make it the status quo necessarily. You have to try and understand the anthropological dynamic as well. And that dynamic is usually often overlooked because people don't even, I'll be honest with you, a lot of the Muslims I talk to, when I say to them, do you know what anthropology is? They look at me with a black face like, you geek. And I look at them and think to myself, it's just a name of, for, for a particular type of easy science you can understand. We do it all the time. When we ask each other about, you know, what's it like in your country? What's it like in your country? That's a very anthropological question. Do you see what I mean? But the point I'm making is that just because history paints a certain narrative, from the evidence that we have, for example, hieroglyphs or, you know, certain pieces of, you know, carvings you get inside of caves, etc. or whatnot, right? Doesn't make it necessarily the status quo. It just gives you a glimpse into the error. That's all it is. It's not the status quo. You know, a lot, a lot of the times, a lot of history is curbed because of societal embarrassments. And the funny thing is this, every single society, culture, race, nation has suffered the same embarrassments, embarrassments the very same embarrassments whether it be China, all the way to West Africa. And this was a known civilized world for in that time. You know, today we have, uh, you know, what we call the United States of America as well, which is known as the new world. So when I'm talking history, I'm talking particularly the old world here, right? Which is basically from the, from the uh, geographic region of China all the way up to West Africa. It's been the same. It doesn't matter what nation you're talking about. They've all had the same embarrassments, every single one. So it's not just, it's not just Kemet. It's not just Arabia. It's, it's everyone, it's the Greeks, the Persians, the Indians of, you know, you know and that, at that time there was no Pakistan, there was no Bangladesh. That whole region was one of the most powerful, most, you know, largest nations in the world. Even today, India alone, you know, without, without including Pakistan and Bangladesh, has one, over one billion people in it. That's one fifth of the world's population. Right there, right? Um, then you've got Russia as well, and, you know, and you've got Eurasian steppes. Then you've got, Asia, you know, Europe itself and all the micro nations that built up that whole area as well. And they were always in fight always in fight. The amazing thing is, it's only in the modern age, you know, that we find that they've united somewhat, and now you have something called a United Nations and a United Europe, which basically is very much united, except for on financial grounds, because the bank Jews are basically making them all dance, but let's not go there, that's a different topic. The point I'm making is that every single nation throughout the course of history has suffered the same embarrassments. Exactly the same. And you'll find this if you do your comparative studies. You will do that, you'll find that 100%. And I can say that honestly and safely, without knowing that there's going to be no reprisals to come back on that. And that's where I'll stop, I think. Can I ask a general question to everyone? Um, any of the Kemet brothers? Would you deny that even prisoners of war or slaves, whoever, were not, were, were they, all right, let me be direct, were they sacrificed to Egyptian so-called gods? Was there sacrifice of humans going on in ancient Egypt? Or is this something I've made up to? So, hold you're talking on, about sex. Kalam, hold on a second. Hold on. Because what's happening here, yeah, Saracen is jumping onto another topic. And just before Saracen went to go and take, take care of his daughter, I asked him a question. Could he go and find me the source for this 2,000-year slavery period that happened in ancient Kemet? Now he's come back and telling me about sacrificing to gods in ancient Egypt. That's one. Two, um, on what um, Dawa Digit was saying, he just said every single nation that he knows from China all the way to West Africa was doing this. Brother, 
there's some nations and some countries that most people don't even know what they were doing. They, they've only just found out new people, new inhabitants of people. How are you going to tell me that every single nation from Africa all the way to China, all over the world, was dealing with the same stuff that you're talking about? They all went what through the same gaps? thing. What, what new nations? You have you have this, what new nations? Yes. Name me the, you just said, you just said new nations. Name me the nations then, innit? Tell me yes. the nations. You might be talking about small Listen. tribes. You might be talking about small tribes. I'm talking about nations here, right? Not small tribes, not isolated tribes. I'm talking about every what? single nation in, in history. You know, I've done my research. Like gaps. Oh, look, listen, grab. What's a nation? After, look, I'm doing, a nation? You, made a, you made a claim on nations. I'm telling you, you're talking about isolated tribes here. That doesn't make the status quo. Well, that gives you isolated it's examples. It's and usually those new tribes that you're discovering right now, you know, for example, you know, they might not have ever had slavery, is, you know, in, in their history. Or they might have. How are you? To, how, how would you find out? How would you know that? Bro, you wouldn't. What I'm, saying, what, no, what I'm saying to you, listen to what I'm saying, brother. What I'm saying to you is this, yeah, is that if you look at history comparatively, you will see that it stretches all the way from the eastern subcontinent of China all the way to the western subcontinent of West Africa. It stretches all the way across. So what you see is you make, you know, do you know what a sample test is in science? You know what a sample test is? Oh, right, I mean, let me show you. Let me show you. Well, no, because no, I'm showing you how to do history here, bro. I think mean, you're, you're playing a bias here. No, you're, no, you're taking isolated examples and using them no, as your status quo. That's what I'm saying. Wrong, you can't do listen that. That's saying. not a fair way. All right, all right, I'll listen to you. No, Sorry, go on. Listen I'll to listen you. All right, go on. You said you're talking about nations and, and, and you said I'm talking about tribes. Now, let me ask you a question. The, the countries and stuff that were in Nigeria or in West Africa, are they tribes? Were they tribes, bro? Is there tribes? There were many tribes. There were many tribes. Okay. But then again, so, those tribes, they, although, wait, 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 wait. Those tribes existed within nations. Let's not forget this. I'll give you an example, okay? In India, look, I'll take a, I'm not even going to go to Kemet here. I can, but I'm going to point the finger back at myself here because I'm an Indian. I'm, gonna, like, I'm telling you, I'm doing this truthfully. I'm going to point the finger back at myself. You understand me? Yeah? Right, listen. Right? In India, there are many tribes. There are over, I think it's 300 and, 300 and 340 different tribes existing today. Yeah? But the nation is one. It's called India. Do you understand my point here? Do you understand me? Right? When the Indian superpowers, i.e. the Rajas, Maharajas, enslaved people, they didn't care what tribe they were from. They just took them for their, you know, whether they were useful for a certain cause or not. That's how it worked. That's how, how it worked. So what I'm telling you to do is, look, don't look at the isolated examples of tribes. Because if you're going to try and paint the picture like, oh, what tribes were those nations? Bro, that's a silly, silly comment to make. And I don't mean to insult your intelligence. I know you're a smart guy, Gabs. I've spoken to you before. I'm saying that you can't use isolated examples to pull us. Okay, can, I, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Sure, so are you saying, so when you say nation, you said like nation, like India. Okay, the whole of India. So when you're talking about Africa, you said the whole to West Africa. Are you saying the whole of Africa as a nation, the whole continent of Africa is the nation, yeah? Is that what you're talking about? Sorry, I just have to unmute myself because I didn't want to let things get interfered. All right, first of all, if you're looking at ancient history, you know, when we're talking about Africa in ancient times, I'll tell you something right now, yeah? If you, I'll, I'll look at Ali Drisi's map, the first world map ever made, yeah? Even in that, Africa wasn't fully mapped. It was only mapped from what you call the, um, you know, northeast coast to the northwest coast. It wasn't any, anything south from that wasn't mapped. It wasn't mapped. So this was known as the wilderness. So I won't paint that area in. I'll be honest with you. I won't paint that area in. But I'm talking no, about... The, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. wait. It's still gaps. What I'm talking about, the words I used was the civilized world. Do you understand what I'm talking about when I say the civilized world? Right? No, I so, don't no, all, right, let me, let me, all right, let me explain. Let me explain. Arabia was not, believe me, right, this is where Africans look better than Arabs in one sense, right? Because in those times, right, the wilderness, i.e. uncivilized, and what, you know, I'll tell you how people um, classify as civilized and uncivilized, yeah? If you were sedentary, i.e. you had, you know, towns and cities, or you had places where you actually settled, yeah, that's called sedentary places, right? Then you're civilized. But if you're nomads, if you're traveling folk, then you're known as uncivilized. Right, so this is in Arabia at that time was fully nomadic. They didn't have any settled places. I'm talking about way before, way before. I'm talking hundreds and hundreds of years before the Prophet peace be upon him. Right, so I'm talking about ancient, ancient histories here. But Africa, North Africa, was settled. Yeah, so in that sense, Bro, it was listen to, what I'm saying. listen to what I'm saying. Right. Are you so what you're saying here? Are you trying to tell me only North Africa was settled? No, nowhere else in Africa on that map. I'm talking about the continent that we know today. As Africa, 
Are you only no, telling me that back no, then? No, I'm saying I'm saying we don't know. I'm saying that we don't know whether it was or it wasn't. Listen, because you haven't got. No one's got a map. No one's got. Do you know that? Do you know? You must your chat. Okay, because I'll let you talk. Because you real quickly, please. Real quickly, please, please, please. Can we have some order? Okay, keep your mics muted, please. Can you keep your mics muted. Everybody, mute your mic. All right, Gabs, go ahead, speak. Yeah, all right. Because the question is, I feel like I feel like um, my brother. I don't know if he's doing it on purpose or he might not know. I feel like he's beating around the question because you said something about the nations, and you said like India is the nation, which is the whole country, that whole little area of India. Yeah. So now like I'm saying, when you're dealing with Africa. Yeah, I said, is that the whole nation? That landmass that we know today is Africa. I'm not talking about back in the day in these maps and uh, Middle East and Arabia. And I'm talking about that continent of Africa. Yeah, is that the nation? Like dealing with that. Then you told me we only deal with places that were civilized. Then you said at that point, North Africa was the only places that we knew were civilized. Now I want to know, is that what he's saying? That only North Africa. I don't know what time period he's given, but North Africa at one point was the only place that was civilized. I'll meet my mic. Okay, to answer your question, Gabs, first of all, history is not convenient. There's no such thing as a convenient history with a simple answer. If you're going to ask questions like this, prepare to have very, very lengthy answers come back at you. Long ones, because that's how it works. Entire books and volumes are written on topics like this. You don't have, you know, a question and a one paragraph answer. That's not how it works, bro. That really isn't. Yeah. So please don't assume that I can give you a one paragraph answer. Yeah. I'll have to give you very nuanced answers that are very, very accurate, but not just accurate, they're detailed. Yeah. So what I'm saying is when I talk about civilized peoples, I'm, you know, this, I've already given you the distinction. And when you ask me, are you talking about all of Africa? If I'm talking about from a civilized, if I'm talking about from an ancient perspective, are you yes or no? Because the, it hasn't been mapped. If it hasn't been mapped, then there's no history recorded for it. The earliest known world map we have is called the Rogerius Tabulus, sorry, Tabulus Rogeriana. Do you know what that is? If you don't, then you can't even comment on the question you're asking. You can't. You can't claim to know something about something that doesn't exist. You can't do that, mate. That's, a, that's what you call the argument from ignorance. You know, argumentum ad ignorantium. That's what they call it in Greek, mate. You know, I'll tell you straight, Gabs, if you don't, if you don't know how to do history, then don't do history. Don't do it. I'm not trying to offend you, bro. But I'm trying to tell you straight here, yeah, that I'm being honest. That part of Africa was not mapped in Al Idrisi's map. Sharif Al Idrisi, I'm sure Callum would know who he was. I'm sure he would know who he worked for, who was a King Roger, right? The Viking Sicilian, right? Now, what I'm trying to say to you is this, that the whole of the world, the civilized world, which was from China right up to the west coast of North Africa, right? Was civil, that civilized section had slavery going on through it and they all suffered the same embarrassments. All of them did. Now, if you're going to try and tell me that Africa, that part of North Africa didn't, I say bring your inferences, your references and your premises. Bring them all and let's examine them. But if you can't do that, then you're not prepared for this, bro. I'm sorry, but you're not prepared for the answer because you're not going to accept it no matter what I say. You just want to entertain your own fallacious arguments. And I think that's a very bad thing to do, bro. Honestly speaking, I really do. If you, yeah, you have to be honest about what you're trying to do here. You can't just come in. Sure, go on. Can I you All right, hold on. For one, you didn't even answer my question. I don't know where you was taking what I was saying. The simple question I just asked you was the nation, the, the landmass that we call Africa, yeah? You just said that the northern part of Africa was the only bit that was civilized. Now, you gave me the reason why it was civilized because somebody drew a map and said, listen, only from this area to here is civilized. So I'm asking you the question. Are you telling me that only the northern part of Africa was the only place that was civilized going by what you just said this brother did with this map? Because he drew this map, yeah, and said, this is the places that are civilized. That means this place was civilized. So no. Just no, because no, it was, no, no. just because they were, uh, just, hold on. I think I, I think just because, it now. Go, on. sorry, go on. Just, I'll let you just because it was on the map, it means that the other places weren't civilized. Is that what you're telling me? No, I'm saying that we don't know about the rest of Africa because it's not been documented. Do you see how honest I'm being here, bro? I'm saying it could have, you might not have. There are many nuances in history we still don't know because if it hasn't been documented, how can I give you an answer for that? What's the time period of that map you're talking about? That 
What time period oh. are you saying? Who are the people that was documented that was civilized enough? 11th century. 11th century CE. Who? May I ask, 11th century. May I ask when you say we, who are you? Sorry, bro, let me just double check that. 11th to 13th. Let me just check. Hold on. Bro, what did he say? I didn't hear what he said. What century? Let me just check one second. I think it's either 11th or 13th. Let me just double check. Uh, yep, it's the 11th to the 12th century. 11th, 12th century. Yeah, right. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, I did read his map. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Callum. So 11th to the 12th yeah. century. There's, uh, be honest with you, there's not a lot of recorded history about the rest of Africa from that point on. I'm talking, when I say the rest of Africa, I'm talking about, you know, South Africa, more mid middle to South Africa. There's not a lot of recorded history for that point. There really isn't. So when you ask me, when you're telling me, how can you know? I'm saying, I don't know. That's what I'm saying to you, bruv. I'm saying, I don't know. Don't try and put words in my mouth that I don't sponsor, bruv. That's what, I'm, you know, we have to do history honestly here, bruv. That's why we can't say we can have all the answers just simply because we're living in the 21st century today, bro. We, we don't. There's a lot of stuff we don't know about our own history simply because it hasn't been recorded. And, you know, the archaeologists still have to do a lot of digging. And even then, they go in on inferences of archaeology and they've got no anthropology for it. They can only guess at the answer of anthropology. And axiology goes even further away because if they haven't got recorded history, axiology can't even be done. It can't be done. Do you see what I'm, do you see what I'm saying? Right? Okay. So the 11th century, yeah? What time, what, what, what time period is that basically? What's that roughly? What's that in the BC? What numbers is that? Um, Brother Kalam, the 11th no, 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 century. Not, not BC. I'm talking about CE current era, bro. We're so 1100, 1100, 1100 AD. Yeah. 100 AD. So, so did the brother just say that there's no, there's no records of anybody uh, uh, before the, um, in, in Africa before 1100 AD? I just, want to, I just want to make sure I'm getting that right. You, you're asking me, yeah? Look, I'm telling you right now, yeah? There are, there are scanty records, but nothing concrete. And if you want to go and do that, if you want to go and pick from scanty records, then you can be my guest, but they can be picked apart as well, Gab. You know, Gabs. Uh, Honestly, I, they can. I'm fine. It's cool. Right. All right, that's cool. It's cool. Next person, I'm, I'm going to be quiet and listen to these guys' um, history lesson. I'm cool. Can, Gabs, right, can, I, can I ask you to clarify your question? Because, sorry, bro, I know you asked me about time period and I forgot what you asked me. You forgot? Oh, you forgot, did you? Ah, right, let me ask you again. The 2000 year period, you said that um, slavery was happening for 2000 years um, by the age of Chemites. Um, which, which time period was that and who was ruling at that time? That. Okay, so uh, I did just send uh, Kalam a list of pharaohs. I think. For the people at home, because I'll be honest with you, a lot of people don't know about uh, ancient Egyptians. Um, I mean, Egypt is a massive, massive uh, time period. You know what I mean? It's changed. It changes throughout the whole with the different dynasties. I mean, the earliest is obviously Namar. But we've, I could probably even talk about pre-dynasty Egypt as well. You know, but Namar would be the first one, pre-1, 3,100. And it went on... Um, all the way past the old kingdom till past dynasty 33. So we've got Sotar, 88, 80. So, I mean, the slavery lasted. The, the fact is, Gabs, slavery lasted the whole that period. All of it. Samson, Samson, stop yeah. it. Stop. So give me, can you give me the date? So give me the date when it started. The two facts. Give me the date when it started and to the date, and the date when it ended. From my understanding... Is 3,100 Nama or Menes, as you guys probably call him. Um, he's the one that united the, the kingdom from the upper and the lower Egypt when he defeated the Scorpion uh, King. Uh, so that's where they get their name, the Scorpion King, from. So he's, he's, the, he's the great, uh, he's one of the great, all time great pharaohs. Um, then after that, we had dynasties. So, so, so that's where it started. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry, let me ask you again who did he unite? Who did he, who did he unite? The upper, upper and lower Egypt. So that's the Nubians and the Kemite? No, no. Upper and Lower Egypt. Nubians were separate. No, no. Lower... What? Ne Nama, or Menes, was the one... So within the, the Nile Valley, we had different <laughs> tribes, right? So, lower, so, 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 yeah. You know, so, so. You know what Lower Kemet... Do you know what Upper and Lower Kemet is? Do you know how yes. to Yeah, let, let, me, let me pull it up. One second. So up and lower Kemet, that's one side of Egypt. The other, when you cross the river, then you have the Nubian Valley. You had the Nubian tribes. That's separate. Oh my goodness, Kalam, can you come and speak to um? Okay, never mind. Never mind. 
Yeah, know, correct I know, me. I know. No, if, I, if I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, correct me. Uh, sorry, that's, from, sorry. that's my understanding. Sorry. If I'm wrong, correct no. me. Go on. No. No, it's fine. Don't worry, don't worry. We'll create you in a minute. But yeah, so from Nama, and it's, it started from Nama, did you say, all the way to where? To all the way throughout the history, all the way right to the end until it got um, taken over. By who? Uh, when when the Romans started coming in, sorry, the Greeks started coming in, they obviously had the influence, but it lasted all the way. There was little kingdoms up until the Roman period, into CE period, wasn't there? So, so, so what you're telling me is slavery was happening from... King Nama, all the way down to the Romans and the Greeks. Indeed, you got it. Uh, bruv, Kalam, do you know what, yeah, I'm just going to listen. Go on, Gabs, you haven't researched this, brother. Fine. You it's said you haven't researched it. Fine. You can't Wait, Kalam, believe no, me. No, you. Gabs, you're, you're right, you're right, you're right. right. You can't be listening. You've got to bring your screen something back as well. Otherwise, you've got medicine. There's no medicine. Where's the medicine going, bro? Where's the medicine, bro? Come on, man. So, so the fair thing to do um, is obviously to no. ask my brother Saracen uh, to provide his evidence as to um, uh, where and how Nama and just one other pharaoh, let's say of the first dynasty, actually enslaved somebody um, or enslaved people and uh, uh, clarify which type of uh, uh, slavery are we talking about here. Go, while you do that, let me just get, the, let me get my sources out. You can just have a discussion. Okay, so do you have any evidence of Nama actually enslaving anybody? Saracen, I'm just asking, is there any evidence of Nama enslaving anybody? So, yeah, so basically, I'm just trying, I'm looking for it right now. I have read it somewhere, but I, I've got, I don't want to misquote uh, any Okay, do you, know, do, you, do you know of any other fears outside of Nama actually enslaving anybody as well? Yeah, we've got. I, I bought that with the whole evidence on the on in the part that day, didn't I? I said the whole. So we. I gave you, for example, the Nubian um, kingdom. What would be useful, Kalam, is if you could show all of the pharaohs, and we can go through it systematically. I mean, we know slavery existed. We know it happened. Um, and if you want to show, you know, that when I showed you in the park of of the Egyptian, or I think it was Thamuz the third. You know, there's so many so many of those kings and so many pharaohs. I forget all their names, but yeah. If you bring up that, then we can go through it. Um, I've got a quote as well from the page he was on about from Dr. Ben. I can read it if he... It yeah, totally goes against what you're saying, Dr. Ben said. So it, seems, on, like, it seems like he lied on him. I lied on him. Go on, say, tell me what it says and I'll tell you what I read. You're saying he says slave, right? I said that it says that he, uh, women were raped. And I read the quote out. They seized their women which is a direct statement from Usonatan the second. So in fact, that answers uh, uh, the question of Kalam as well. They conquered their victims, women, to rape them. When they were raped, their offspring were treated as, as the victors' children. Certainly, the Nubians did the same as Egyptians when they did the victors. Where does it say seize them? I mean, where does it say conquer them to rape them? Uh, I say, it says, I seized their women. That's what he wrote. Yeah, that's, but it doesn't say to rape them. <sighs> okay, so I don't know what you're reading. Page 104. I seize their women was their direct statement, also in the second. Why did he conquer? So this is Dr. Ben. Why did he conquer their victims, women? To rape them. I'll read it again. To rape them. When they were raped, their offspring were treated. Just look at number 0.4 on that page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, keep going. Yeah. All right. So to, when they were their offspring, certainly the Nubians did the same to the Egyptians when they were the victors. What was this all about? What was it over? This was wars. These was wars, and the women. Come? So no, no. The point is, these were wars. Women were being raped in ancient times, and their children were taken, and they were they were then used as a, as the offspring of whoever took them. Now, if you can't, if you whether whether you call it slavery, whether you call it the reality, is whether there's a name for it or not, that's slavery. What does it go on to say, bro? So that's what I've that's the quote I gave you. So, so I'm going to give you a direct quote from Dr. Ben. Go, at go end, for it. At the end of the same page. Yeah, go for it. He joined in a highly successful adventure in the capture of the Hebrews of Palestine. This was long before the 12th dynasty, when there was serious conflict between Nubia and her sister state, Kemet, which eventually caused Pharaoh. You sets and the second to 
finally captured. This added the proof that new this is added proof that the Nubians were prominent and honored honored people in Egyptian life, even up to the reign of Yusuf and the third document show Nubians was in Egypt as long as human beings occupied the land. Yeah, so that doesn't change anything, does it? You said I lied. And I've just showed you how I didn't lie. I said to you that, and I made a statement, and I put that towards us, and I, if you're raping women, right, let, let's be objective here, forget where, where we come from or anything like that. If you're no, raping no, no, women... No, 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 I'm not giving you my opinion. I'm saying be objective. If we, We've all got mothers, we've all got children, uh, we've all got sisters. If our women were raped and our children were taken and the next man who raped them and they raised them, and, and they, you know, what would do you think that's a good thing? I don't, do you honestly, be honest, do you think that's a good thing? Say that again, bro. Oh, gosh, all right. So you got, we all got women, right? We got my mothers, we got our sisters, we got our daughters. Now, yeah. if, if, the, if, if a next man comes, takes them, rapes them, and you got children, takes your children, and says, these are my children now, and I'm going to raise them how I want, yeah. You're telling me, that, oh, that's a wonderful thing, is it? That's in the, under what? It's not a wonderful thing. No, it's not. No, go, of course. So that, there's no. That's that's the point I'm making. The point I All made, right. and and the reason I used that quote is to but show that's you not the context that it was done in. The context you are trying to paint it in was not. They weren't going. They weren't just going ravaging each other's land, taking man's gallon. Saying, "What are you talking about, bro? That's oh, not gosh. how things were going down." All right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, and number one, let me just quickly go in there because a lot of the times. We go to secondary sources and, um, you know, there's a lot of colorful language being utilized there uh, rather than actually going to the primary source. Exactly. And just, just to quickly state, in the primary source, it doesn't say that anybody raped anybody. Just to put that out there. Um, just to put it out there. Certain doesn't say that anybody was raped. It talks about seizing the women um, and also having other people taking the cattle, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there's no talks of rape. So Salam, can I interject there just to clarify a point? Uh, the ahead. brother asked me, give me a point from a, you, you're using Western historians. I said, I'm using Dr. Ben. All right, where's Dr. Ben? What page, brother? What page? I gave him page 104 of his own book. And, and you didn't uh, quote the whole, and you didn't quote the whole page. I, Dr. Read ben it. Saying. Anyone, all right, anyone can go check it out. Um, Dr. Ben's book, uh, Africa, the mother of Western civilization, 104. It doesn't get, I don't care. You can't, Sugarcoat this, right? Sure. This is the thing. You asked me, no, no, I'm giving the context of it. You caught right? no, out of context. No, no, you caught out of context. That's oh not fair. God. How is that out of context? When because he you didn't finish the whole page, if you'd have finished so, the whole page, you'd have seen where we're saying Nubians was highly, highly prominent and in, in, um, respected and honored in the Egyptian life and society. There was certain, yeah, no doubt. There were at certain so, then what are you certain, about? Certain... so that goes against what you're saying, bro. Out the window. Right. See you later. No, no uh, well, you, you just got done, my friend. You got done live on Titans TV, and I'll do you again right now. You did yeah? well, you know that. No, no, Listen, let me let me let me finish the point. Let me finish the cool. point. Yeah. Yeah, liar. Carry, he's carrying on like Sarah right now. Yeah. Um, the point is this. Uh, this is page one of four. You asked me for the reference. You thought I wasn't going to give you the reference. I gave you the reference. Yeah, then you went on chat. Oh, you lied. This that. Yeah, well, read it. Don't just read the one bit. It says it says it says it said they rape. You said it's not a good thing to read. Yeah, read the whole page. Read the page. No problem. Ask people here. Where it says exactly what I just said to you. So why are you leaving that out? The Nubians have described as living produced high culture. Yes, absolutely. And with their neighbors. Okay. So so maybe you maybe you don't understand history. Let me give you a let me let me let me let me yeah, let me give you a history lesson. Why did let you me, let me, let me, let me, out, let me give you a history lesson because I don't nah, you know it's disingenuous. History. Okay, so then listen to what I'm saying. What that that's that's okay, family. okay, yeah, listen, bro. If you interrupt me, you're not gonna learn. All right? You can't I'm, teach me nothing. <laughs> oh, so you're a class uh, book already, uh, then. You don't uh, want to learn. No, no, you no, say no, you can't teach me that. And there's no point to you there, bro. Maybe you exchange ideas, right? I'm playing. If you're not that you you can't be taught nothing, then you're not open to exchanging ideas. You're just just willing to push your narrative, and that's a very, very how do you say childish thing to do? You're not yeah, prepared yeah, for this, for sure. bro. For, We're for titans, sure. bro. We're titans. Here. We're titans. We're here to learn, bro. We're, We're here kids, to learn. Bro. We're, We're here to learn. I am, to be honest with you, bro. I'm trolling you a bit. I'm just stirring you up. Yeah. All right. But the, the fact is, yeah. Right. There was certain Nubians that were honoured. It was Nubians that took over the Egyptian Empire. There was periods where there was, you know, where they fought together foreign enemies. No doubt about it. I'm not saying that that, that didn't happen. But what I'm also saying is that there's periods where 
the Nubians were their women were raped, and it was mainly the ancient Egyptians that were doing it. There was periods where uh, the Nubians went into Egypt and did the same thing. This was the world, yeah. This was, you know, at that time there were black. This was black on black. But at that time, like the brother said, the white brother from Germany, I think he was. It wasn't about so much race. It was about tribe. It was about who you associated with. So can I ask you a question? Yeah, go on. Was that a family feud? It doesn't matter if it was a family feud. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't ask no, you no, no, matter, no, 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 no. Depends what you mean by family. Question. Well, you just, can that's say, all I ask yeah, you, just okay. Uh, I would, I would, <laughs> I would say, I would say, yeah, I would say it was, it wasn't. If you're talking about a family feud, as in, this is thousands of years of history by this point, yeah. So it wasn't like a family, like you know, just a small little family feud. No, you can you can expand that. Well, brothers and sisters in humanity, is that a family feud? Yet we fight all the time. Do you know what I'm saying? So no, this was about this was about imperialism. This was about one nation and one tribe conquering another. So that's exactly what it was. And you've asked me from your own sources, and I've given it from your own sources. I don't know what more. You I didn't quote the end. You didn't quote the source right to the but, but end. Read the whole page if you want to you read. You created your own narrative out of the source, bro. No, I, I used it to demonstrate a point. But you know, and people you left could, out uh, the point. You left out the point. Your point is it was honoured. Okay, so let, oh, let's let's do, yeah. do. You want to deal with that now? Do you want to so deal you with how they were honoured? I've just told you there's times where they were honoured and there was times they were disrespected. But the fact is, I'm not you. I'm not here to. I'm not talking about. I'm talking about the women were raped. Dr. Yeah, we talk ben about put in the se- in the same part where you quote where I quote Dr. Ben put it proves in it, um, Nubians was prominent and honored people in Egyptian life. Okay, brother. If it makes so you that, feel that, better, that, that, you're, 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 you're crutching us. So anyone reasonable who's listening to this over was well, that all I'm saying is there was times where Nubian women were raped. There were times where Nubian children were taken out of their families and taken in to Egyptians to be raised by the victors. This isn't me speaking. This is Dr. Mm-hmm. Ben speaking. And I accept your yeah, point. Can... No, I accept your point. I accept your point. There's times where Nubians were honoured. I accept that point. Yeah? That's not why I'm up. But I'm just pointing out that there was other times where they weren't. And I just gave you that demonstration. So anyway, bro, I'm not going to blind well, on this. You created so many... your own narrative out of that, and that was I don't know. Point. All right, cool. I've created my own narrative. Yeah, fine. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, let's, have some, let's, let's have some order. Let's have some, inter- let's have some order. Uh, brother, we're going to get you in. Um, my bro- but my brother, I just want to let you know again, okay? I know, I know other authors may interject the whole raping part, but just to let everybody know, that raping part is not actually within inside of any of the literature of the ancient Egyptians. Just to put that out there. But no, would you say uh, Dr. Um, so ben Robert, was Go a... ahead, King. All right. Yes, now yes. check it. Go ahead. Everybody, um, y'all, y'all keep, yeah, well, y'all staying with one person or two, Dr. Ben, but you also had Don, um, Dr. Uh, John Heinrich Clark. You also had uh, Dr. Claude Anderson. Um, just that, look, I saw a lecture where Dr. John Heinrich Clark said it was only two reasons for enslavement within Kemet religious differences and for resources i don't know what narrative y'all following i work in mental health i don't know what narrative y'all following those were the only two reasons up until the europeans came they did it based on skin color skin color you what you didn't find egyptians going down to nubia and be like yo we different from you so we're gonna enslave you we did you didn't find that so stop this narrative with like, oh, black on black. Listen, if you look at Mexico right now, they're killing each other for the drug trade. Is that Mexican or Mexican crime? This stuff don't make sense. There was only two reasons enslavement happened. Religious beliefs and for resources. We got this lake over here. You on the other side of the lake. I'm on the other side of the lake. It's just drying up. We're going to fight for the rest of it. You understand? That was it. Not because, oh, your color shade is lighter than mine. So I'm going to enslave you, rape, rape you. Put, place you all around the world. We're talking about European culture where the, 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 the Europeans went around the world and they stuck their rod inside all indigenous women. We're talking about one group of people that went around the world and stuck their penis in every woman they found. It's not the same. I don't care what y'all talking about. Look more than just Dr. Ben. 
look, I got, I got many stylists that we can, we can talk about, and that's all I wanted to say. Uh, I, lo I love out. Dr. Ben. To be honest with you, Dr. Ben's my favorite Afrocentric. Bro, 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 let me just deal with this point. I agree with what the brother just said, by the way. Let me just say, right? I agree with. I did find it funny towards the end, but I agree with what you're saying. It's not about race, but the only reason I'm demonstrating and I've made this about black on black violence is because this is a quote from me, Muslim on Muslim violence, with my debate with Ali Dawa. For those of you who missed it, yeah. So I, it's in context of that, yeah. So all I'm trying to show you is that you guys go around saying, oh, Muslim Arabs, they they enslave black people, this, that, yeah, but the earliest Muslims, and we're going to do a show on this, the biggest black power movement ever in the history of the world was the Umayyad Caliph. Yeah, so if you're going to say black people were enslaving black people, uh, but it had nothing to do with race, then we got to use the same standards because the Umayyads enslaved other black people. So you, then, yeah, later on, uh, some Persians did it, some uh, Ottomans did it. But then what about the ancient, the, then the later kingdom of the, the later kingdoms, which was mixed. We all know that there was mixed kingdom. You know, you're saying, oh, it wasn't about Kemet, this, that, the other. It wasn't about skin color. That's not how they dealt with. So you guys have fallen for the, the, the Western <laughs> imperialist kind of, uh, you know, liberators who sold you this narrative that the Muslim slave trade was terrible, it was Muslims were the worst people, blah, blah, they enslaved black people. I'll say to you guys, do your history, do your research, yeah? This was a narrative and the whole race thing came up, right? Look where you got your information from. Because as Kalam said, you know, there was different types of slavery. Equally in Islam, there's different types of slavery. There is arguably no other dynasty. I'm not slave, I'm not defending slavery whatsoever. But arguably, if we are gonna play that gut game, yeah, there is no other dynasty that allows slaves upper mobility like like within Islam. You look at when slaves, the Mamluks, when they slaves become king. You look at all the Abbasid kings, most of them had slave mothers. Yeah? We we can go through all of that as well. You look at how some of our greatest ever Muslim scholars were slaves. You look at Nafia, the teacher of Imam Malik. Well, I can drop you so many bombs, you know, your head would spin. You look at the early Muslim empire, like I said, the Umayyads, most of those tribes were black. You look at what the people have said, the, 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 the Egyptians, uh, sorry, the, the Persians. You look at the Chinese writing in the Ming Dynasty, it describes them as black invaders. You look at what the Crusaders said, black. You look at them, we can go on there all night. I can drop that with you, yeah? So, and I do want, Callum, I want you to bring that, little kid Sarah, Sarah because I want to have it out with him but is Muhammad a black man so because he keeps on pushing this narrative yeah and his friend Gary as well Gary I get on with and I apologize for that comment by the way that I made um in the park it was in Bantan I didn't mean it but yeah I want I want to have that discussion we can talk about the biggest black power movement oh, yeah, you know what in the last you know show what? hold on hold on hold on hold on hold on in the last show I said, you know, I'm an Indian and I was, you know, while I was in Arabia, people were talking to me in Arabic. And a lot of the guests said, that's because you look like an Arab. Yeah, here we are, we're getting a narrative that Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a black man. And I, yeah, I look Arab, which is very strange, right? These ironies don't get lost on me, bro. Anyway, look, I just want to quote from a book, this book here. I don't know if you can see the title. Yep. From Glory to Ruin, an epic account of history's ancient civilizations by Cormac O'Brien. You know, these are the only historians you've got. I've got loads of books in the history here I can quote from as well. Yeah, but I'm just going to quote one paragraph here. Yeah, and this is about the sixth century BCE. BCE. Okay. By this time, Carthage, which had regularly sent tokens of tribute to Tyre, had grown to prominence among the Phoenician communities in the Western Mediterranean. And local North African elements, it had established a civilization all of its own, known to us by the Romans as Punic. That would continue to flourish in the wake of its severance from Tyre by establishing colonies of its own, as well as gradually assuming control over those that had once paid tribute to a now occupied Phoenicia. Over the ensu ensuing centuries, the Carthag Carthaginians amassed a trading empire that left in its wake a virtual control of the Western Mediterranean mercantile activity. Much of the, uh, much of the North African coast, Sardinia, Corsica, and the Balearic Islands and Southern Spain ultimately fell and ultimately fell under the control of Carthage's Thalass or extended maritime network. Here, what they're trying to say, this, what this book is saying, is that there was a lot of mixing of blood going along, going on, yeah? Even amongst the North Africans. Because people were invading, and at times, Africans were exporting themselves out and then coming back, you know, with other mixed bloodlines, etc., etc., because of identity getting lost and then wanting to restore it back again. So you see over here, 
that it's not as black and white as you'd like to paint it. It really isn't. History is such a, such a nuanced subject that for, you know, and I said, to, I said this last time as well, I'll say it again. Find out how black you are. I find out I'm not Indian at all. I find out to me, to be, to be Indian means nothing in the modern age. To me, to be white means nothing in the modern age. Just like most people have got white DNA. And vice versa, and mixing, mixing, mixing. So, see for yourself. Because holding on to these racial precepts doesn't do nothing for our civilizations to basically progress themselves. We're going backwards here, holding on to old world precepts which don't really take us anywhere. Anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. All right, Brother Saracen. Saracen, you there? Yeah, yeah, bro. Go, go ahead. I know, I, I know what you've got to bring. I know the medicine that you want to dish out. Um, unfortunately, I think your medicine is, um, is wrongly aimed. Uh, I think you should aim your medicine towards the rest of the Muslim world on the Arab population. Uh, when you're talking about uh, the Prophet being black or brown skin or dark skin and the Umayyads being black or brown skin or dark skin, anything like that, I think you should aim it towards them rather than towards, um, rather than towards Sarah, to be honest with you. Because throughout the whole Arab world, they believe, literally believe that the Prophet was white and the whitest of whites as well. You could simply look at the, the message, uh, which is a prominent um, you know, Muslim video, which has been propagated to let people learn about the Prophet Muhammad. And, um, you know, he, he's been white-skinned. Uh, his family is clearly being depicted as white-skinned. Uh, you can go through Islamic literature and you can find him being uh, white-skinned. You can go through Islamic literature and art, sorry, art as well, and you can clearly see him being white-skinned as well. So I think this um, battle that you want to you have with Sarah, I think first of all, you should take it to your, um, to the Muslim world first, before you take it to Sarah. I, I, think, I, think, I think you're slightly disingenuous there, bro. He's trolling people. He doesn't bring anything to the table. He really doesn't. Yeah, yeah. Accusations and blanket statements and then coming off with sophistry as you like to call it yeah that's what he does he doesn't have, he doesn't have any substance to himself nothing. at all nothing the debate Sarah is a bit of a wet rag bro okay i'd have more of a okay uh, you guys. I, I would say this i would say this Callum. i would mm -hmm. say this bro you know i go to the park and you've got me on camera you've got me on camera promoting amongst muslim black prophets yeah you you feel me when i first come to the park you know i'm a big promoter of the black muslim revival um, I, that's me. I say I don't care who the audience is. The reason I want people here to know on Titan TV is to show that we're not all the same. Uh, some of us Muslims, we love our black brothers and sisters. We're going to promote that. We're going to re resurrect that history. Now, I don't believe the Prophet ﷺ was black in the sense of like, you know, the pure black sense. I believe he was brown. And he was described as brown skin. And tell him, you are an intelligent brother. You know, when it says in the Hadith, white, you know it doesn't mean white, like, you know, uh, white European. You know the Arabs had a word for that. That was called reds. And they didn't like to be called reds. That was actually part of the race. If there was any racism, it was against white, you know, white people, Europeans. They didn't like that. You couldn't call that an Arab red. You know that they were brown skin. They were probably mixed race. They were dark. They were, some of them were black. You know, the Prophet Sallallahu that's why it says, and let's deal with that other quote that you mentioned earlier. Qadi Ayyad Rahim Allah said that anyone that calls the Prophet Sallallahu black, you know, execute him. Now, this was a time of civil uh, discord. What he, what the point of this qu the quote was, it is wrong to misrepresent the Prophet Sallallahu to call him a color that he's not. You know, this applies to people calling him white and thinking he's white and we need to do more work on that and I'm working on it. We also need to say that he wasn't black as in the pure black skin uh, thing. In modern terms, Dr. Ben, and I'll give you this quote again if you want to go there. You know, Dr. Ben said in modern terms, the Prophet Muhammad would be seen in, in, as black. Yes, but it, the blacks, the, uh, the Arabs had 10 categories of black. And you can read this in Tabari. So the Arabs had 10 categories of bra blacks. Uh, and by all accounts, most of those Arabs, especially in the period period, you know, they were dark skinned uh, or, or even your color, Kalam. You know what I'm saying? What happened after 650 is when the Abbasids took over, who were Persian, 
you know, this was a Persian influence. You see the pictures of Imam Hussein as a white man. And we see that, you know, we see Hellenistic thought coming in. And you see this whole black history being taken out. All of it, largely. And me and you agree on this point. I don't think there's any point of debate. The reason I need to get Sarah on there is because there's a lot of people he's misleading. Yeah? And there's a lot of people who are backing purely because he's black. And he's going around saying... This is wrong. And Callum, you need to call out this is wrong. And I don't see you or Gabs or any of you lot doing it. This is, and this is the thing. I didn't want to do all of this. You oh, know, I, stop getting my name in. No. Uh, Callum, Callum, stop this, bro. Because this guy, these two have been rambling on here for so long. I've been sitting and listening. But listen, you need to tell him, Gabs, yeah. bro. Saracen, Saracen, let me ask you a question. Because you, you were just saying something that don't make no sense to me, yeah? You just said about black, yeah? And then you said even Callum. What colour do you see Callum? Is Callum black or brown? I would say, in modern terms, you'd be seen as black. I say Kalam's white. Kalam is white, and I'm what? I'm talking about so, Saracen. No, I'm talking Saracen. about. No, no, you no, see no, Kalam no. as white. Finish. Let me say. No, you are, no, I want to make a point of this. I really no, want to make a point of this. But I see that black man got a light off his face, bro. Saracen, I'm, I'm talking to Saracen. Yeah. Saracen, got, but let me say. Let me say. Let me say. Yes, you go. Kalam. Don't tell me about modern terms. When you see Kalam. Is he black? Because you know what black is, or is he brown? Gabs, let me just... I'm going to be straight with you, yeah? Right? I don't really... I, yeah, yeah, question. I will. I'm, asking, I'm asking you the question. I don't really see people through the prisons of race. This is the thing where me and you probably differ. I see them through the content of character, right? This is... And, and, you know... No, no but, but to answer your question, your if, question, if you're asking me, yeah, if, if, if I had to put him... If I, if he, if I had to tick a box, what colour? It would probably be black, yeah. So... So, Kalam, so you know what black is and you know what brown is. You're telling me, looking at Kalam, this brother is a black man. Black is black. So, if Kalam is black, I want to know, if Kalam is black, what were the Nubians that you were showing that you were saying this is a black woman? What are they then? Are they, they black as well? They were, they were black they? as well and they, and they were black, yeah. Absolutely, they were black. Bro, make, make up your mind. So, Kalam... The, the color that you're seeing right now, yeah, and the picture of those dark nudes, they're the same color. Is that what you're telling me? Bro, there's listen, black, there's different categories of black. If you really want to go into the science I'm, of I'm it, we it, can bro. go into the science of it. No, don't worry, Kalam, I'm, 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 bro, there's no bro. medicine today, bro. I think I think the cure's be dished out today. You're, you're losing it, you're getting too vexed today, man. What's wrong with you? We're doing different categories of black by someone who is not black. You you telling us who we are. No disrespect, but are you telling us who we are? I don't get that. And then you highlighted the different shade between the Nubians and the Egyptians. I saw the same video. Why would you do that? Well, because I'm, al I'm allowed to have an opinion. This is the thing, you know. We're, we're allowed to have different people. We're referring to resources. I Listen, you, anyone that's watched the show, watched the show back, watch all, any time I've been on this show, know how much love I've got for my black people, yeah? But we have to also deal with history as well. And we have to look at you know, things like, like, like the brother Dawa Digital said, things are a bit more nuanced than that, you know. Uh, and, and we have to look at the history of that. And so we, we just have to respect each other. All right, family. All right. I'm tired now, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's been a very um, interesting, very interesting uh, dialogue this evening. Um, I'm trying to get into my bed, to be one honest thing, with you. One thing, Callum, before you close the show off. I'm trying to get into my bed. One of the sources I've been using um, is a source called, and it's actually an African website, brother, yeah? It's called africaresource.com. And the actual page I was on is called is, is slash Rasta slash says Sostris hyphen the great Egyptian Hercules slash shades of Arabic skin complexions and explanatory notes. I highly advise reading this article first before we come into the next, um, next chat because otherwise these color definitions are going to get confused if you're talking about arabs and what they believe is white or black it's not talking about color of skin it's talking about complexion i.e how light reflects off your face yeah and that is what is really referred to when the arabs talk about color they don't really care about the color of skin itself in fact if they do they were mentioning that uh, uh, they do mention that the color black is actually highly prized i.e the best camel is black the best olives are black the best um you know so many different things like the hajar azwad the black stone is black yeah you know all these different different garba is black Right, so black is not a derogatory color in, in Arabia at all. It really isn't. Well, it shouldn't have been. What well, today it is, yeah. I.e., the House of Saud. But like I mentioned in the beginning of this chat, the House of Saud are very, very defective elements, and we, all us Muslims, we have problems with them. 
because they're not representing us. And if you look at their history, they're not even really Arabs, they're Jews, right? So we're talking a whole other sort of nuance here, yeah? And it, it, there's, there's been a polarized shift of understanding when it comes to these matters, right? Which is why we, Saris and I, have to come here and represent the real deal. And only often enough, you find that a lot of Muslims will go against us because they've taken the Saudi version, you know, the sort of uber Wahhabi version, right? Which is not really working for us because we actually like to read, whereas they just like to take information sitting down, fed to them through a TV screen, which is very wrong, right? No one likes to read them. So let me ask you a quick question now, real quick question. Um, I'm going to start with Saracen. Just one word answers. Just want to get quickly done. Saracen, what color complexion is the Prophet Muhammad? Brown. Um, brother Dawa Digital, what color complexion is Prophet Muhammad? Right, color, nutty brown, like, uh, but then complexion, white. And now what, what I mean by this is that you know, if you look at the Arabic understanding of this, it's how light reflects off your face. He was Nura, you know, he was, you know, I can give an example. One Sahabi, one day walked out of his house on the 14th night when the moon is the, you know, when the moon is full. And he was standing there looking at the moon and thinking, wow, how can anything be any more beautiful than this? Then he saw the Prophet peace be upon him come around the corner and he couldn't take his eyes off the Prophet because the amount of light that was reflected off his face. This is off a brown man's face. But the amount of light. And I can see, look, look, Callum, let me, to explain this point, I see this on you as well. Like you're, you're a black man with, with dark brown skin, yeah? But when I look at you, even in this chat, I can see whiteness reflected off your face. Okay. That's complex. So, so you, you see what I mean? So, so we're talking about nuanced understandings here, yeah? So you both believe that the prophet was brown skinned. Um, and I'm going to ask you lot both this, the next question now. All right. Um, Saracen, what color does the majority of the Muslim world believe the color or complexion of the prophet was? White. Thank you. And then same question to Brother Dawah Digital. Why? It's true, okay. bro. This is a mad thing. They don't, they don't, they don't study these things. They don't okay. Mean. Hold on one second, one second, because I haven't got much time. The so, Arabs, um, the Arabs, I if you think, I think it will be, I think it will be very okay. Can you just, just, just mute your mic, my brother, because I haven't got much time, and I just want to, you know, be quick. So, um, what I would really love for you guys then to do is. Uh, I will definitely afford you an opportunity to present some information on the brown skinness of the Prophet Muhammad. And I think you, sh you lot should really uh, champion this and, and uh, educate your brothers within inside of Islam about the color and complexion of the Prophet. Um, and after you've done that, then go and attack uh, brother uh, Sarah or Gary for stating uh, literally what the majority over... 2 billion worth of Muslims actually believe, or 1.7 million Muslims believe. So, you know, do your job, champion the brown skinness of the Prophet Muhammad, and then afterwards, and then afterwards uh, you can change the minds of uh, Gary and Sarah. Sarah and Gary and William to I want to exactly what the Muslims believe. Go ahead. Sorry, what I, was, what I was saying was that, look, I'll be honest with you, right? I'll talk to people who are reasonable. Yeah? Talk to people reasonable. What I've seen so far of Gary and Sarah, I don't see reasonable people. I'll be honest with you. You guys are reasonable. Yeah? But I don't see Sarah and Gary as reasonable. I see them as very antagonizing. Who don't actually have, you know, you know, I, I see them as suffering some kind of Danny Kruger, to be honest with you. You know, when a man has to pull out his Gary Google, you know, his Google, right? When Gary has to pull out his Google and look at troll sites who don't even present information properly, right? And then gets debunked things like whale on the, you know, the earth on the whale and all this other nonsense, right? Nonsense that I, as a Muslim, haven't even heard of. Right, and I do my studies, and I see he's bringing these fringe nut job sort of narratives. How the hell am I going to talk to a person like that? I'm not going to insult my own intelligence. My granddad said to me when I was a child, he said, Look, son, when an intelligent person tries to argue with a stupid person from a distance, they both look like donkeys. Sorry, guys, but I'm not going to entertain that stupidness. I won't. Here, I've said it. Okay, I see. The problem I'll is do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm happy if he, if he keeps it respectful and doesn't come out with this black Tommy Robinson stuff, I'm happy to educate him. But he has to admit when I'm right, because this will be such an education, uh, you know, and we'll prove the Prophet ﷺ was not a white man. But the problem is, and I agree with what Dawah Digital just said, you know, you can tell some people, you know, the sky is blue to, your, you know, as much as you want. If they, if they don't want to listen, they don't want to listen. They're deaf, dumb, and blind. They don't want to learn. And that's the thing. I, I, I would love to. I think I'll do some more for the audience, for the brothers and sisters around the world who need to know the truth, who need to know about the early Umayyad period, the pure black power, if you want to put it that way, 
You know, we need to get this narrative out there. I'm happy to do that. You know, Callum, you will back me and I'll back you on this. You know, we, we think alike on this, yeah? But you, I really want you, you need to, you know, because you've got that link with sorry. He won't listen to me. I'm a brown man to him, you know? You need to tell him, look, bruv, Prince <laughs> was not a white man like you see him, bruv. You know, because you guys can do that. Oh, uh, just see, see what I would say is this. Um, what the problem is at present is, unfortunately, I know my both of you, my brothers, I've got very good hearts and very honest individuals. And uh, you guys in the whole Islamic world are considered the fringe who are coming up with these secular statements uh, to the re to the rest of the Muslim world. So, um, you know, I'm just waiting for you guys to actually champion this information. And then afterwards, uh, when Sarah and other people can start seeing the shift where other Muslims don't actually believe that the Prophet was white or white skinned, I think, um, you know, my brother may just choose to champion that with you. Uh, but at present, the majority of the Muslim world, uh, you know, clearly states that he was white skinned. We can go to the art, he's light skinned. We can go to the literature, he's white skinned. Um, so I'm sure my brothers are just continuing with the uh, mainstream Islamic narrative. You with me? So I can't wait for you guys to just champion this information. And this hopefully will bring a shift in the consciousness of uh, Muslims and black people around the world. I didn't hear anything you said, but... I'm saying, you speak to Sheikh Mohammed, right, in the park, right? He'll tell you what he's meant by white. Yeah, Sheikh Mohammed is a scholar, right? You know Sheikh Mohammed, the one who comes with a big scarf over his head, right? The mm -hmm. Palestinian scarf, right? And basically, you talk to him. The Saudi scarf, sorry. You talk to him, he'll explain it to you. Because when you read a translation, what you're getting is a very linear representation of a very nuanced text. Yeah? Which is why when we read the Quran in English, we have to have the tafsir with us. Otherwise, we're going to butcher it. Yeah? And not just tafsir. We have, you know, I usually have multiple tafsirs with me, as well as the Arabic. It has to be done. Because you're looking at, you know, you're studying scripture here. You know, not just scripture, we're looking at hadith as well. What does it mean by white? Is he talking about the color of skin or is he talking about the complexion? Like, for example, look, I'm pretty white skinned, but I have my days when I'm low in iron, right? And I get a dusky complexion where, you know, you can say it's kind of blackness that is coming from my skin. But not talking about in skin color, we're talking about in terms of complexion. Yeah? The two are, the two are mutually exclusive here. Like you get some, some white people who, who look ill. When they look ill, you say that his complexion is black. Because it's you know it's a part or, or there's a spiritual sickness inside of him, for example. So that you know, I'm, I'm I'm just kind of curious, you know, how did you guys actually come to the conclusion that the prophet is brown, whereas the remainder of the Muslim world actually came to the conclusion that he's white? Just 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 to throw out there. No, it's my answer first, yeah. First of all, most of that look. I want on the last show, someone made a fallacious comment that most of the Muslim world is Arab. That's a fa that's a false, false, false dichotomy. There's only 100 million Arabs and over 1.8 billion Muslims, right? So most of the Muslim world is non-Arab, yeah? Which means they're non-Arabic speaking as well. Secondly, most of the Muslim world don't even read. Thirdly, right, when they do read, the only thing they do read is the Quran in Arabic. They don't understand it, but just to get the prayers out of the way. Fourth, if that's what they're doing, how can we expect them to look into the Hadith? Five, when I was talking about last week, I said, we mentioned Tabari and even Ishaq. Most of the Muslim world don't even know who these people are. So when you're asking me, what do the Muslims know about this? I say absolutely jack diddly boo. And that's the truth. And you know the strange thing is, Mr. Kandam? The Muslims have returned back to the age of Jahiliya for this reason. We've gone back to the age of ignorance, which is the pre-Islamic time. You know, when, and you know, the irony is the first word revealed to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was the word Iqra, which has a duality of meaning of read and recite and pro proclaim. Read, recite, and proclaim. That's why he answered, I'm not a reader. You know, I'm not a learned man. He was he had to be repeated three times and then hugged into his chest and burned into his heart that I'm asking you to memorize and proclaim to the rest of the peoples to declare in the name of your Lord. And you know the verses. I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure you've studied it yourself. So what I'm saying to you is not out of context. It's in context. Not just that. It's backed with tafsir. And not just that, when you look at the world today at large, not just the Muslim world, who bloody reads? Forget the Muslim world, who reads? Only those who have a scholarly inclination? No, there ain't many other people, there ain't many people out there who've got scholarly inclinations. People who might go to university to study to you know, further themselves in material gain, not in spiritual worth. And that, 
how many people do you know who've been to university and gone into the gone into the you know uh, suggested trades? I don't know many, man. Only my brother. Who went into it. No, point I'm making is that you know a lot of Muslims are ignorant. And Saracen, you know, we, me and me and Saracen, we we're considered a friend fringe nut jobs now for saying this. And we put our necks on the line when we go out there and do this filming and do this talking and this that and yeah. But we're the ones who get our fingers pointed at, fingers pointed back at us. So I just wanted but, to know how did you come to the conclusion yeah, that the prophet was? Come to you and answer the questions in a way that is very fair and very very true. Yeah, right. And because look, my my pursuit is truth. My pursuit is truth wherever I find it. And if that means saying things that some people are going to find hard to stomach, so be it. And I don't care whether it's Asian people, whether it's Arab people, whether it's black people. I'll tell you the truth whether you like it or you don't like it. My, my brother, I'm sorry to cut you again, but I need to just be, I'm tired. Trust me, I'm so tired. I'm trying to go to bed right now. I just want to be real poignant, just real quick to the point so I can just get everybody to have their point and then I can just get off the show. So real quickly, how did you come to the conclusion that the prophet was brown? Right, first of all, he is a Semite. The Semite's Semitic skin is not wholly white, European white. It is got flecks of brown in there. And also, you can have a reddish complexion, i.e. when he gets flustered, his face used to go red. Same way yours would as well. Yeah? But then when you talk about the complexion, not the color of skin, when you talk about complexion, the complexion was known as white. So that's why he mentions two things. He mentions white and reddish. White and reddish. Reddish meaning that he's got a nut brown skin that can go red. Not what it doesn't mention his skin color as white. He mentions it as radish, yeah. But not radish as in red, as in European white. He mentioned it as in like you know uh, Semitic white or Semitic radish, right? Which is a sort of like nut brown skin color, yeah. A bit like mine, just a tiny bit, probably a couple shades darker than mine. Which can still, can still when he when he gets flustered, still gets reddish in there. But then when he talks about complexion, he mentions white, i.e., he reflects light. So when light hits him, he reflects just like it's reflecting off your face right now, um, Callum, just like that. So if, if, if you're in Arabia and someone to describe you, they, they say, yeah, his complexion is healthy, his complexion is white. But okay. colorless it would be such a hard thing to nail down when there's so many shades of brown and black. So you're saying so, that his color is red, but his complexion is white. No, is that what you're saying to me? Color is not, first of all, no one's got red skin. So, Apart from, unless, unless you're Mikhail Gorbachev with a massive thing on your head, right? No, no one's got red skin. It's a, it's a, figure, it's a figure of speech to say, look, when he gets flustered, his face would go red, i.e. his cheeks would go red. Okay, but what is his color of his so skin first? That would be a color that allows for that to happen, yeah? Which means that when in, the, in the range of Arab, Arabic skin tones, yeah, you had some skin tones that, allowed, that, that manifested this reddishness. He was from that subset, subset of skin tones. And then you had complexion, which also managed, managed to, uh, which helped narrow down how he looked further. And there's a book I've got here, actually, it's called bro what's the fam? oh my media brown can you can answer right? it can answer it can answer it wow yes because wow. wow. yes. yeah bro let me answer it short and sweet Saracen, go ahead king wait, wait, go wait, ahead. Wait, i know you guys are tired so anyway um first first yeah. up we know that the um, the axum kingdom yeah. colonized arabia as you mentioned as well in a lot in a few weeks show so we know there was a mixture of marriages there's a hadith in ibn talmudi jamia sahih Volume 161, uh, the hadith is 174, which well, says, The Messenger of Allah was medium status, neither tall nor short, uh, with beautiful brown skin complexion. His hair was neither curly nor straight, and he walked when he, and he leaned forward when he walked. So we know there's hadiths that he was brown. There's, and this is just one, I can give you many. There's other decent Tirmidhi in uh, Ibn Khatib's. Ibn, uh, Ibn Khatib's book, you can probably hear I'm tired as well. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's probably the strongest evidence. Then we've got his uh, um, cousin, Ali, Ali Salam, who's described as brown. We've got many of the companions described as well. I'll bring the evidence. It's a whole long show. Yeah, so we ain't got time for that. But that, that's, in a nutshell, that's short and sweet why I believe he was brown skin. Well, Sir Saracen, this is the actual okay. book that I'm talking about here. This is the book I'm yeah. telling you right now, right? This is the book you're your, your quoting. Yes, from. that's right. That's right. By my table, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can see that, yeah? Yeah, that's my right. Table, yeah? Right. yeah, and then I do agree that most Muslims don't know their history. That's straight. The brother made a fantastic point. You know, most Muslims don't even know the basis of Islam, right? You ask them with the six uh, uh, pillars of faith, they won't be able to tell you the six pillars of Iman. They won't be able to tell you knowledge is all so, time real quickly again so why do you think that most muslims believe that the prophet was white 
because they've been colonized, brother. They've been, we're living in post-colonial times where white skin is seen as the beautiful skin. And, uh, you know, even in our own countries, uh, you know, in Pakistan, for example, people wear this white cream. In Africa, they wear white cream because we, we're living in post-colonial times. But brother said a very important thing, you know, we and him might be the fringe, and you said that too. But the Prophet Sallallahu said there'll be a time where, you know, Islam will start as something strange and return as something strange. So glad tidings to the strangers. And hopefully me and him will be those strangers that will resurrect the truth and the truth will set us free. Okay. So also, um, you say it's because of colonial, post-colonial times. Um, are you aware that the prophet from earliest of times were depicted in art as white skinned as well? Uh, certainly from 650 onwards the persian times yeah um when the persians took over they they they, they did it you know imam hussein uh, ali salam he's just he's, he's white skinned but it depends when you look at 650 we're talking about 650 onwards yes prior to 650 there wasn't many pictures the mayor's policy wasn't to draw pictures that's not how they rolled and stuff but we have literature this is what I'm saying to you. We have literature from the Persians, the Sasanian Empire, from the Ming Dynasty that describes the Arabs as black conquerors. Oh, sorry, Saris, let me just stop you there as well. First of all, let's not forget that most of the surviving works in terms of pictures and, you know, or artisty, artistic sort of representations of prophets and people were done by the Turks. They're the surviving copies we've got left there from the Turks. The Turks themselves are what you call a Euro, you know, a, a, a Euro-Mongoloid race, which means they have a white skin. Not just, a, not just a complexion, but a white skin, yeah? In the same way that Jesus is depicted as a white man with blue eyes and green eyes and blonde hair, yeah? The Turks done the same thing with the Prophet Muhammad, please be upon it. So there you have that influence as well. So let's not forget, I mean, if you're aware any surviving, copy, surviving uh, manuscripts which had images of the Prophet, peace be upon him, which was not allowed to be done, by the way, but from this sort of, um, you know, um, the time just before the times when the Mongols, you know, appeared, then you'd probably find that with that he was painted as brown. Simple. Because they don't survive, because the great, great library in, um, in um, uh, Iraq was um, destroyed and all of its works were, this is a very sad fact, but all of its works were destroyed by the Mongols, burnt to a crisp. Then nothing survives. Nothing survives. And what you have today is only the surviving stuff from the Turks. And the Turks themselves, as I mentioned, are white-skinned people. So they would obviously depict him as a white-skinned man. And there you have another answer there as well, which makes total sense. All right. Excellent. Um, so, brothers, uh, Gabs, I don't know. I don't know if you had any last words to actually say um, before we close out the show. I think before I actually close out the show, I think I'm going to split it into two shows where your presentation was at the beginning and then uh, the second bit where uh, Brother Saracen comes in. But go on, did you have anything to say? Yeah, about that. Hello? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I did. Nah, um, I was going to say, nah. On that whole topic on the thing, the reason why I was even I was just waiting to ask the questions because um, I came off early because Saracen, I was trying to find out from Saracen if he knew his, his colours because obviously we know what the colour black is and obviously we know what the colour brown is. The brother clearly said that you are not brown, you are black. Now, um, the brother Dawa Digital just said that the Prophet Muhammad was like a nut brown. Now, if anybody looks up the color of a nut, bro, yeah, you know what color that is. That's probably the same color as Brother Kalam, not brown. So I'm trying to understand. Oh, and the Brother Saracen claimed and said, well, he said that he's brown. But I don't know what type of brown Saracen is because I've seen the Brother Saracen. We've seen him on the video. That's more like a light. Well, you, you get the point. But anyway. The reason why I, I digress, the only reason why I was saying that because we know for a fact the brown that the Prophet Muhammad was could only be the same brown as um, the brother Kalam, the same color. If we're going to go by what Dawa Digital said, saying that he's a nut brown, I don't understand why people was dancing around the question. And people was, I'm going to stop you there, guys. That's not what I'm saying at all. Oh, that, oh, Let me say it, I'm it down. Yeah? I'm saying there were shades. Yeah. For example, look, last week people were saying that you look Arab. Do I look brown to you? Answer the question. Can I go red when I get flustered? Answer the question. He could have been my color, but I'm not white. I'm not European. I'm Indian. Go figure. Are you finished yet? Yeah? All right. What was I going to say? Um, 
Yeah, going by what Robert Dower Digital said about obviously uh, brown as a nut, he gave us a color. If you look at a nut, a nut brown, you know what color comes up. Anybody can go on Google, type up nut brown, and you see what color will come up. That's what I'm saying. And that color resembles the same color as um, the brother Kalam and even me because when, you, when we're dealing with shades of color, you know what brown is and you know what black is. Yeah, peanuts blacks being variety, darkest. Bro, the peanut, but peanuts come in varieties that are basically like the Mediterranean brown. Not the African brown or the Indian brown, but Mediterranean brown, right? Or copper, what we call copper or bronze. Yeah, so that's the kind of and uh, the healthy complexion. Glow. All right, thank you very much, family. It's been an absolute um, pleasure. Am I lying? I'm lying. I'm lying. It's been interesting to say the least. Yeah, this show has been very interesting. Unfortunately, I don't have the energy uh, like I normally do. Um, so, but thank you all for tuning in. Um, I'm going to post the link with inside of the comment section right now. So if you choose to join us, uh, please come and join us as well. Uh, before you leave us, please give us some thumbs up. Give us some big thumbs up. Let us know that you're actually enjoying the show. And, um, you know, you've caught some, some jokes today. You've caught some jokes and you've caught some information and you got entertained. Uh, the medicine man was here and the doctor uh was issuing the cure from my brother saracen so very interesting discussion um i know everybody might be a bit heated uh based upon certain topics that we spoke about but hopefully you lot actually you know took something or got to took something home today uh but big shout outs as well i'm um, gonna have to a rich kid three he's a big pussy i just wanted to say that sorry i just have to put huh? answer martin is a big pussy okay say. all right and then um you know thing will be six seven then Rich Kid 639, I just want to say um, shout-outs to you. We're going to have Brother uh, on the show very soon. He deals highly with the um, Kabbalist, Kabbalist? Kabbalistic um, practices and, um, and philosophy as well. So I can't wait to have him on. Um, also, we're supposed to be doing a show with um, Rob the Atheist or Agnostic Atheist. Uh, who has the Speakers Corner UK channel to discuss freedom of speech. Um, you know, when is freedom of speech, not freedom of speech, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I definitely want to get him on uh, with, uh, you know, different audience members as well to come on to actually discuss freedom of speech. Also, um, I've been getting requests to actually do videos on the uh, similarities between Islam and Kemet. Uh, so kind of, kind of, on the on the aim of uh, building building and bridging the gap and showing the unity or showing uh, you know how we can possibly come together and stop the fighting etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, I think I'm gonna definitely do a show on that very soon. I don't know when, but very soon. Um, and yeah, that's about it, man. That's about it. Um, I'm gonna shut down the show right now because I need to sleep. Love and peace. Uh, and uh, yeah, man. Love and peace. <laughs>